Two years ago in 2012, a crack duo, one martial arts expert and surprisingly good mimic, the other a weapons specialist and professionally bearded, were sent to separate recording stations thousands of miles apart to do an 80s and 90s action commentary podcast for a crime they happily committed. Something James Spader told them about that involved an industrial drum of coconut butter hand lotion and a common household whisk. These men promptly created a passion-filled wave of action adoration that swept throughout the internet underground. Today, still wanted by Steven Seagal for making one too many jokes about his expanding gut and knitted hair, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you love action, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you should be listening to Dr. Action and the kick Kid Commentaries. This podcast, people, explodes. Hello and welcome to Doctor Action, the Kick Ass Kid Commentary Podcast. I am Doctor Action. And I am the Kick Ass Kid. And don't worry, Lenny, I will find her and I will fuck her. Oh, that's the version of Taken we want to watch. <laughs> All week I've been walking around saying to myself, I will fuck her, Lenny. <laughs> it's Just the, in the Lenny of... thing. When, when it... you say the Lenny thing, that's what really... Lenny, I'm going to fuck her. I will find her, and I will fuck her. (laughs) Fuck her, Lenny. Like I fucked you. Can you hear me on the phone there, Lenny? (laughs) Am I a loudspeaker? (laughs) If I I woke up your husband... Let your new husband hear me, fucker. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you won't hear her, actually. I've got her gagged. (laughs) Do you want me to take the gag off, Lenny? Do you want to hear the screams, Lenny? The whimpers... (laughs) The submissive cries. <laughs> Actually, I've still got her drugged up, so she probably won't make too much noise anyway. That's just the way I like to do it, Lenny. You but remember, I, found her. I used to chug you, didn't I? I didn't had... I, Lenny? That's how I got you. That's how I got you pregnant. And then I had to throw a punch <laughs> you, because you wouldn't shut the fuck up. She definitely deserved to throw punching in that movie. Yeah. I will find you, and I will give you a goddamn throat punching. Throat punching. I'd punch you in the throat. <laughs> I'd punch you in the throat there, Lenny. <laughs> Not once, but twice. Three times. Twice. Three times. Three Did times. Say three. Lenny. Three. No, three I, I'm Irish. Three. Three. Shrub, bush, tree. <laughs> That's how we count in Ireland. Look at me tatties, Lenny. <laughs> Look at me tatties. I'll be mashing them later. Once I'm done fucking this poor drugged up little cow. Okay, hello and welcome to yet yeah, yes another uh, episode of Doctor Action the Kick Ass Kid, and uh, well, I mean, just what a wonderful time we've been having lately. The episodes have been uh, just fantastic. The uh, group on Facebook, my God, is exploding every day. Our caption competitions are just getting hundreds and hundreds of of uh, likes and of comments, and uh, we couldn't be happier. And it's just so great how how much all of you are interacting. I just I tell you what, it's it's been amazing, hasn't it, Doc? It has been. It, I've, uh, I'm very proud of you all. It's, oh. uh, it's really fun to actually go online. There's no no nastiness. Nope. Uh, there's no... I'd put a stop to it, Lenny. <laughs> yeah, put a stop to that fucking <laughs> ignorance that people do online. It's not nice. You're sounding more like Brendan Gleeson now. I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to go for. Now. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'm doing Liam Neeson and you're doing <laughs> Brendan Gleeson, who is probably the same person. Liam Neeson, Brendan Gleeson, probably... The same person. <laughs> but yeah, when it, once Liam Neeson takes the bulldog clip, bulldog clip off the, off his back, and his yeah. stomach comes out, <laughs> same same guy. Did you like me in Bruges? I'm the same I'm guy. I just cinemas. don't dye my hair or throat punch people quite as much. I've not what they call. I've not got what they call stereotypical Hollywood good looks. A special set of skills. It's mainly hoeing and ploughing. Yeah, I was born on a farm <laughs> yeah, in a pig pen. Although, and, uh, dude, have you seen the trailer for the new Gleason movie um, by the same director who made The Guard? Uh, he plays a priest who gets threatened by a guy who was molested by another priest years ago, and he threatens to kill him, and he has to like go on a revenge around Ireland. Um, oh, that sounds good. Dude, it looks... I'm not even kidding. It looks... 
Ah, uh, it looks awesome, so it does. It looks. Don't you threaten me! It looks bloody marvellous. Uh, I'll, so go I'll, be a, I'll go on a priest fucking rampage <laughs> in Ireland. I need to see the guard as well. Because I haven't seen that. So I, I might have a, a double bill of Gleason. I might go see the guard and then when this other one comes out uh, in New York. Which will be any time soon. <coughs> if the trailers are edited to go, boy. Um, it'll be any time soon. I'll go that. see that. But I do like Gleason, dude. I'm a big fan of Gleason. I'm a big fan of Gleason and Neeson. So when are we going to get a Neeson and Gleason movie? That's what I want to know. I'd like him to go on tour with ukuleles. <laughs> I think you were going to say with you too. You know, I was like, no. So Not with you two. You two. I, I couldn't. I couldn't sit through you two just to watch it. Unless, unless he throat punched Bono, <laughs> then I'm all for I that. I just think the world should all be about peace. Fuck off, Bono. <laughs> <laughs> I've met the Pope in my sunglasses. Don't you know? Fuck off. I have a particular set of skills. Did okay. you see me throat punch Bono there, Lenny? Did you see it? Now I'm fucking his corpse. Look at this, Lenny. Live on stage at the O2. Shut up, Edge. Otherwise, I'll fucking do you with your guitar and your arse. <laughs> That's how I would want it to go. That's how you roll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cavalry. It's already been out in the UK. Cavalry. That's the movie. Yep. Can't wait to see it. Well, it's an art house release over here, so it's. Uh, of course. It, it'll be coming out a little uh, a little later on. But uh, I saw a trailer for it when I went to see. Forget the name of the movie yeah. um, that I went to see at the uh, Angelica, which is like the hipster, strokey beard art house cinema in I, town. I watched a documentary with, with the Angelica in last night. Ah, well, there you go, you see. Um, yeah. I was at that very cinema just recently. And when I was there, there was bloody Gleason, and he came on and he said, I'm not, I'm not taking this line down anymore. You burn down my church, I'm going to shoot you in the fucking face. It's what God would have <laughs> So, yeah, but it looks like a really good premise. And um, I checked out the trailer for The Guard because I'd heard about it and I hadn't seen it. And I think I can get that online, so I want to see that as well. Um, but, yeah, looking forward to that, So Looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to... Um, is it Death Amongst the Tombstones or uh, a yeah, Walk Amongst walk, the Tombstones or whatever it's called? Walk Amongst the Tombstones. Yeah, that looks really good. Which was filmed in the neighbourhood. You know, I lived with a friend of mine for a month. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It was filmed in that neighbourhood, so I know exactly... Uh, where it was filmed, and it was it was meant to be Washington Heights. They even say it in the trailer, so I know exactly where that is. And uh, I cannot wait to see Leeson walking around there. Um, it's, a good job. it's a good job he wasn't filming it when you were there. Oh no, it would have been awesome if he was filming it when you were there. But he'd have been like, "Hi, Leeson, <laughs> fucking love ya. you. You ruined the shot, you bastard." Been, he would have been like, "Wait a minute, are you the kick-ass kid? Get in the shot. I want this guy in the shot." He would have had me in there throat punching people with him. Yeah, that'd been awesome. It's the seventies, but don't worry, your beard will look fine. Yeah, it's a very seventies beard. That's it's a, a compliment, by the way. It's a compliment. Way. It's not a detriment to your character. Uh, so, what's your week in action been like, Doc? Uh, not much. I've just been watching uh, various movies. I've watched uh, the uh, I watched the making of Clerks, which yep. which is what the Angelic is in. I oh, on the, on the, you mean on the tenth anniversary disc? Yes. Clerks X. Yes, right. right I've, okay. got, I've got the Blu-ray. Sure. Uh, uh, what was it? What else did I watch? Is uh, it called uh, the Snowball thing or whatever? It's the called? Snowball Effect. Yeah. Right. Oh. Uh, what else did I watch? I watched Harold and Maud. That's action packed. If you like young lads, lads up. going going down on old ladies. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's an awesome film. <laughs> and, uh, I watched a bit of action film. I watched The Driver with uh, Walter Hill. Nice. Right, Neil. It's very good. Very cool. Uh, I've yet to see that, but it is on my list. It's a very good film. Oh, it's a great film. I'm going to be doing Irish and Irish all night. <laughs> uh, well, it's okay because Colm Meaney's in the movie. <clears throat> that's right, he is in the movie, isn't he? And he was like the proto Gleason. He's kind of like who Gleason's become, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Colm Meaney. He's just one of those guys who's always around. I'm sure he doesn't sort of go hungry, and he's always working. He just pops up in anything. It's just when it? people say Colm Meany, I think Blue Meany, and I think of the <laughs> Yellow Submarine animated classic. Yeah, different thing. Yeah. Um, I've, I've watched other bits, but I just I can't remember them off the top of my head. Oh, well, the sir. Grand Budapest Hotel, I watched that. Not much, a bit of 
bit of shooting, bit of gunfire, and then there's the old uh, skate run where he goes down the the the, the whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not it's skating, a... is it? What's it called? No, it's uh, bobsled. Is it bobsled? No, it's skiing. That's the Ski. word I'm looking for. I don't yeah. do it, you see, because I'm not upper middle class and wanky. Oh, uh, I don't do skiing. No. Uh, no. The uh, only Englishman who can get away with skiing is Roger Moore. Yeah. He's the only one. Yeah. And well, he I... has to do it when the Beach Boys are playing. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. I, I'll, I'll only do it if the Beach Boys are playing. Yes, I'll only do it if it's clearly green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Fetch me, young man. Oh, Roger, not for that. <laughs> I don't need any help in that sort of... Well, do you want to hear my week in action? Because my I week do. in action, dude, is... I have to say, it's pretty impressive, uh, if I do say so myself. All right, Chief. So, since we recorded Tango and Cash on the 5th, I've seen The Man from Hong Kong... Oh, yes. um, which uh, is George Lazenby and uh, an Asian actor whose name I can't remember, but he was a bit of a shit, uh, apparently, while filming. Uh, but it's the Brian Trenchard-Smith movie. It's currently on YouTube, so I would check it out, because it's fucking awesome. It's really awesome. It's like <clears throat> it's like one of those movies that... Uh, it's clearly low budget, and it's it's like clearly an exploitation movie, but they, the action does not let up. Does not let up. It's boom, 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 boom. It's really good fun. Definitely check it out while it's on YouTube. Uh, that's the man from Hong Kong. <clears throat> um, then I watched um, Taken Two on July eighth. Two. Yeah. Uh, which, I, I, you know, I'm watching it and I'm like, there's nothing obviously wrong with it, but there's something wrong with it, and I just don't know what it is. And, you know, a few people online said <clears throat> it was the director and it was you know, a kind of redundant story and, you know, the action wasn't as good and I, I just don't know what it is. It, 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 this... I, I, I personally think it's just the fact that it's just not got as much um, weight to it. You sort of really don't... I mean, his, his wife gets kidnapped. I don't give a fuck. No. Uh, I'll be back very... to get you, Lenny. Oh, well, I yeah. won't really. I'll just leave you there when you're Unless I meet whore. <laughs> if I meet whore, oh, I'm not going to bother um, yeah, it's all just a bit random. I mean, it's fine. It does the job. But uh, I imagine Taken 3, they'll figure out the problems. Um, Escape Plan I watched. The Last Stand I watched. I've done that. But get this. July 13th, I watched Crank. Yep. Drive Hard, the new Brian Ooh. Trenchard Smith, with uh, 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 your man John Thomas Cusack. Jane and John Cusack in it. Which... Yep. Brian Trenchard Smith has asked me to say is more of a buddy comedy than it is an action movie. There is obviously car chases in it and blah, 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 but because of the budget, they weren't able to wreck any of the cars. So it's more to do with the patter and the chemistry between the two leads than it is an out and out action movie. But it mm. is, there is some gunplay and it is good fun. Um, I would suggest watching it. Uh, I've got it. I've got it. So good. I've got to watch it. Uh, and then watch Blind Fury, because you can't get enough Rutger Hauer in your life. And then, uh, July 16th, just the other day, Punisher Warzone. Oh, I love that film. Yeah. But look at me. Aren't I having a week in action, Doc? You are. Look at these. Uh, there isn't a bad movie in what I've listed. It's just been hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. So, uh, if, if, you know, uh, if people haven't seen the movies I'm listing, then take the weekend... Sit yourself down. Tell your loved ones. Say, listen, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't love you anymore, but that it is my life is hollow and redundant without these movies in them. And then I want you to sit down. I want you to... Your children could come to you with a gaping hole in the head. I want you to push them away. I want you to say, no, you don't understand. You'll survive whatever pain and trauma you're currently suffering, but I will not be able to go on another day breathing until I have watched and then list off you know, the movies that I've said, which is Man from Hong Kong, uh, Escape Plan, Last Stand, Crank, Drive Hard, Blind Fury, and Punisher Warzone, and Under Siege. Without those movies in your life, th th there's no point. There's just, there's no point getting up in the morning. Whatever no, you're doing, it's, it's, whatever you've done so far in your life, you failed miserably. And uh, you it's need to... It's a damn good list. I do like that it's list. A good list. It's a good list. I'm telling you, dude, I have been on a roll 
on a roll, sir. Cannot, you put uh, me to shame. Cannot, I cannot wait to continue. I had to watch Crank, dude. I had to put some Statham in, and uh, it had been a while. I watched Crank uh, a few weeks ago. <sighs> Such a good fucking film. It's, it's great. It, it might not be his best film, but I think it's his best performance. Yeah, it's his best role. I think it's, it's his it, best role. Yeah, I honestly it's do. You see, it's what you want to see him play. Yeah. Um, My uh, name yeah. is Jeff Chilius. Yeah, it's just how he just doesn't give a fuck about anything. It's brilliant. Yeah. <coughs> Chops the dude's hand off, doesn't he? Oh, that's the, one of the best scenes in the film. Yeah, it is. And then means his brother. All right, you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a great... They kill cunts in the phone, he's fucking dead. And yeah. he, he says things like, Have I got cunt written on my forehead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's such a good film. Like, it's a really good I, film. I actually don't... I just, I just think that's... That's just a documentary that is just Jason Statham one day in the life of. And uh, Neville Dean and Taylor are just, just like, can we just follow you around with the camera? Come on, then, for fuck's sake. I'll show you what I get up to. <coughs> yeah, Harry, fucking poisoned. Hurry up. I have to go to the hospital because I've got a raging fucking hard on. And I'll get, get up on this police bike. I always wonder, though, because he's meant to have, like, a big hard on when he's on the police bike, if when he crashes into the restaurant, just how much that fucking hurts his cock. Eh, well, no, Jason Statham's cock, he'd probably go flying through the window cock first. I I imagine that when he he landed on the table full of people eating lunch, that he probably slipped into, like, a woman's vagina, probably cushioned his fall, I would imagine. Probably probably just slipped right up in it. Just landed in it. Hot like dog that. roll. Like, oh, <laughs> give that fucking tag. Eat, eat that. Eat that, lady. You'll love it. Love it. Do you want some fucking sauce on it? <laughs> give me a minute. <laughs> the best bit, though, in the whole movie, for me, for his performance-wise, is when he's running out of the hospital and he phones up the doc and the doc's like, you're going ha- <coughs> to have this. And he's like, that, check. You're going to have this. Right, that, check. You've got to have a massive hard on. Right, check. Like, and it's the way that he's just running and, like, doing the check in a really yep. funny, deadpan way. It's just amazing. I love it. Yeah, and people say that he can't act. I love it. Oh, his comic timing, man, in Crank. I'm not even kidding. His comic timing is out of this world in Crank. It's perfect. It's really fucking good. I've told you before, one of the best lines is when he's like, oh, get a bloody cell phone. Like, it's just the way he does <laughs> it. It's so good. Get a phone. Get a phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great film. And he's there at the at his girlfriend's house, and she's like, "Could you fix this? Could you fix that?" And he's like, "Love, I've been poisoned, and there's people coming to kill you." And she's like, "Yeah, but I can't get the clock on the microwave." <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Mm, fixed this coat. Mm. Such a good. Every, everybody plays a good role in that film. Such a good movie. And if you want to hear us talk more in depth about Crank, it's uh, available as an episode on After Movie Diner. It is available on the episode of the After Movie Diner. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. In fact, uh, thanks for mentioning, we should uh, pimp all our stuff at this point. Best place to go to find all of it is uh, AfterMovieDiner.com, which is our central hub. There are uh, both links and tabs to all things Dr. Action uh, all things cross talk, all things B movie bargain bin, and all things after movie diner. That's after movie Everything is through there. Uh, if you are looking for a podcasting network that provides constant uh, weekly product of a insanely high standard with laughs, knowledge, interviews, movies, action, everything. It's it's the aftermoviediner.com and by extension the second unit podcast network. Uh, although most of the shows on the second unit podcast network, I'm now involved in. <laughs> You're involved in everything. You're just like a producer extraordinaire. Yeah, because uh, I'm now co-host of Drunk on VHS as well. Where, by the way, this week and I don't see Mo, bless him, doesn't get round to putting it up as a podcast as quickly as I do. When I finish Crosstalk, I put it up as a podcast straight away. Boom, it's there, ready to listen to. Uh, Mo, on the other hand, bless him, doesn't do that uh, for Drunk on VHS. But when Drunk on VHS gets... Too busy selling porn. He is too busy selling dildos to old gay men. But (laughs) um, when Drunk on VHS goes up, it will be about Punisher Warzone. Excellent. 
So if you, if you miss it on a Wednesday night, you can hear it when we put it up as a podcast. Well, I'm, I'm usually asleep when it's when you're uh, recording, so I, I listen to it straight away in the morning. Wednesday evening, 8pm, uh, is di- uh, Direct-to-Video Connoisseur with Matt Poirier, or Poirier, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Matt, I apologise, and Matt. the uh, delectable Jamie Jenkins. <laughs> Uh, then you have Drunk on VHS with Mo Porn and myself. Uh, then you have half an hour of music called No Mummy Issues, which is just me spinning the wheels of steel. Yeah. Uh, then you have Rasslin, uh, which is um, uh, Mo Porn again and fitness guru Vasti McGavin talking about Rasslin. And then we end the night with Crosstalk, uh, which this week we had uh, Tom Sullivan on um, uh, talking all about the Evil Dead and other stuff. Yeah, that was, was very a, exciting. It was a great interview, that was. Crosstalk is going really well. I'm really enjoying it, dude. Well done. Thank you very much, sir. Well Thank you very much. Trying to do my best. Trying to do my best. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Michael Parkinson could go fuck himself. Yeah, I mean, I, I really think that uh, I'm I'm there now. I think Gloria Hunterford can finally retire, um, you know, and uh, I can step into her comfortable slacks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And Robinson can go fuck... Uh, and and here I am. Eamon Holmes can go sit on a fucking spike because. Uh, yeah, and Terry Wogan can uh, carry on wearing his wig. Uh, Terry Wogan can go lick Eamon Holmes' asshole live yeah. on this morning. Oh, what are you doing there, Terry? Are you got your tongue right up in my brown eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't Hello, know, have you? Dear Eamon, I'd love to stick my tongue <laughs> up your brown eye. How would that work for you? <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Uh, don't worry, we don't need to interview anymore. There's this chap, John Cross. He's doing a terrific job. Oh, he's doing a top of the morning job. Peter Osmond. Mm. He has uh, stepped up to the play, and my goodness, has he become a uh, presence on our website. He's been fantastic. Every day he comments on something. Uh, Slow McDonald, he's coming on Crosstalk soon. Excellent. Uh, um, what else we got on there? Pete, Paul Bianco, regular. Um... Jason Ritter, the legend himself. Yeah. He's yeah. always posting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've got... We've got uh, he did ask us a question about the movie. Oh, he did? Who? Ritter. Oh. Doc, I'll give you three guesses what actor, action star he mentions in the question. Oh, yeah, his favourite action star. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He bloody Rod loves... Hull. To... <laughs> what? Rod Hull. Rod Hull. Rod Hull. <laughs> Oh, hey, Emo, Emu, Emu, I've got my hand up your arse. Met him, he smoked a pipe. <laughs> um, there you go, a bit of trivia for you. I thought you were going to be like, I met him, he smoked my cock. Yeah. He touched me. Smoked my pole. He touched me. He's working if uh, he comes, comes forward. Oh, no, he's dead anyway, he won't go forward to the police, will he? he di- he's, what, didn't he die weird? And didn't he fall off his roof? He died fight adjusting his satellite dish. He was watching the football. Yeah. Uh, the aerial was obviously wonky. So during the night, gets up, gets a ladder, comes at the top of his roof, and uh, tries to uh, correct the aerial. Falls, falls off and dies. Nice. Ah, funny. If that, yeah, that's how I want to go. I want to go falling off your roof in the middle of the night doing something twatty. Yeah. Fair what was he doing up there? Wanking. Don't know. What a madman. What a madman. Got, bath- got a bathroom with some wet wipes. Could have done it in there. <laughs> Sock. No, he was doing it on, on the bloody roof, shouting like a loon. I like to do it in the bathroom with some wet wipes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's relaxing for me. And it's more considerate then? No, it's not considerate because I still make the. I still be sort of going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what doing it, doing? Lenny. Do you hear me? I'm doing it. I've just been wanking off into a wet wipe, pretending it was a little French girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can see her now, Lenny. Her drugged up eyes and her flimsy limbs. I can only, I can only fuck up with, fuck women when they're drugged up, Lenny. <laughs> it's a curse more than anything. That's why I went there. He went to France. He weren't trying to find his daughter. It's just a happy coincidence that he found her on that boat. Mm. 
He's like, you know, in that bit where he's sort of in there and uh, the guy's got the guy with the eyeliner is bidding on the woman. Yeah. Yeah. Just, he was like, "This is our prized possession. Bidding starts at a hundred thousand euros. She's pure." And he's like, "Buy her. Buy her. Right? I want you to fucking buy her." He didn't even realise it was his daughter. He just wanted her. Yeah. He's like, "It's your daughter, you sick bastard." Even better. Even better. I've seen a Serbian film. I've just, <laughs> I've just put a bag on her head. You've still not seen a Serbian film, have you? No. I refuse to watch films like that. Oh, it's good. It's, uh, yeah. it's a comedy, right? Fun for all the family. Oh, my kids loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Yeah, it was no a lot, of, lot of controversy bro- in the US about it, though, because it was released as a PG-13. <laughs> this film's not rated. That's good, guys. We can go there all together. We don't have to worry about whether it's an R or not. Let's go and see a Serbian film. I love Serbia. It sounds like such a fun country. Oh boy, why Colombo movie starring Mark Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo is going to be playing Colombo. Any care. thoughts on that? Don't care. Oh, it's going to be my favourite film. That is. Don't care. It's like my- oh, someone's going to be playing someone who we've already seen a million times played much better by someone else. Not that Mark Ruffalo isn't cool, but. We've seen it. Yeah. Just one more question. I, my wife loves you. Just one more question. Just one more question. When you flip them over and do them in the ass, (laughs) (laughs) is that like all the way up in the ass or is it just the tip? I'm only asking because, well, Mrs. Colombo, she was saying the other day in the kitchen. (laughs) Yeah, she was saying in the kitchen. Plus, I got another question. I'm sorry, I'm taking up your time. Do you look at the cadet? Do you look at the cadet? Sounds like you're saying, do you look at the cadet? Do you look at the cadet? <laughs> just answer. Just, just another question. Just one more question. <laughs> Assholes say what? <laughs> <laughs> just another. It's literally just another question. I'm sorry, I don't want to even take up your time, but uh, assholes say what? Assholes say what? What? No, it's a, it's a glass eye. It's a glass eye. <laughs> No, don't be afraid. You can look at the other one. The Touch other one it. that moves. <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> uh, that's Seriously, creepy, isn't it? You want me to hit just... out the back of my head and it'll come out the front. I'll show it to you. You can polish it. I love it when people polish my fake eye. Sometimes when I've got the hoover on my dick. I, I, I <laughs> and Mrs. Colombo's away for the weekend. It pops out. I, I killed the pigeon. the pigeon once. Oh. I'm sorry. I let Mrs. Colombo go away on uh, wine tasting and asshole licking weekends with her friend Jeremy. <laughs> while I stay home and I fuck the dog. And I suck my own cock with the vacuum cleaner. I have a great time. That's, that's, how, we, that's how our marriage stays fresh. <laughs> uh, my question is, do you want to come around my house this week? <laughs> I'll pop my glass eye out. You can give it to me in the face. Sometimes I pop out my glass eye during the night and I put it in Mrs. Colombo's twat. It's like it's like a Serbian film in my house. <laughs> I say, would, 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 what's the weirdest thing you'd do with the, your glass eye if you had one? Uh, put it in people's drinks, probably. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Um, I'd probably put it on somebody's seat. If it was on the bus. Yeah. Pop it out if somebody's going to come and sit down next to you. Yeah. Just put it there and then they sit on it. They can just sort of feel it out. Just turn around to him and look at him. Uh, one of my eyes is sort of all bloody and now I go, I think you're sitting on my <laughs> eye. <laughs> then they get up and they see a glass eye. That'd be, that'd be good. I'd pop it out and put it in my hand and pretend I could see around corners. <laughs> I'll just see if they're coming. No, not or, yet. <coughs> or at a gig, at a gig, and you put a person that you're with, goes, I can't see the band. You go, oh, I can, look. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I can see it. Perfect. I'd have it, I'd have it attached to a spring so that when I leant forward, it <laughs> bounced out of my socket. <laughs> like a slinky spring, you know? Yeah. I'd have one that when I pressed a button in my pocket, it glowed up, glowed red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, second unit podcast network. We're going to be doing a new podcast <laughs> called What Would You Do With A Glass With Eye? With A Glass Eye, yeah. Well, I tell you, Mrs. Columbo, she likes to uh, <laughs> stick it in a twat and then uh, in her asshole and then... Uh, and it's she my brain glass eye. Sticks it in her eye and... Switch it on and she... Wait a minute, she sticks it, your eye. eye in her eye. Oh, yeah, she fucking loves it. Yeah, for your eye only. Uh, what were we talking about before glass eyes? I don't know. What movie are we doing this week? Columbo. <laughs> That's it. We are... We don't have the seeds, Janet. We don't have the seeds. Not done. What was last uh, <laughs> stick cigar film we did? I don't know. I didn't bother to look it up. I can look it up now, though. I think it was... I have it at the end of my fingers, or as I like to say, the fingertip. <coughs> uh... Lawman season three was when you were in New York. Ah, of course it was. Of course it was. So and then uh... before that, we did Above the Law Nico back in January for our... Uh... Black exploitation month. Excellent. So uh, we were due. We were due for, uh, um, for a Steven Seagal film. We're both uh... ill. You've got the cold and I'm coughing... Yeah. So uh, expect us to be a little slow on the uptake, but we'll see what we can do. We, we'll do our best. Um, <coughs> show must go on. Yeah. Uh, as uh, the guy from Commando said. I'd probably, uh, if I had a glass eye, you know, when like people say to kids, oh, you could have someone's eye out with that, I would walk through the room and pop my eye out and then scream into a kid's face, ah! Ah, like that, and like, and you like, did this. frighten them for the rest of their life. Uh, like clutch at the socket and roll around on the floor, squirting ketchup all over the place. So it looked like I was just bleeding profusely. It, and when it, the kids it, started to cry, I'd be like, Don't, don't fucking cry. You ruined my face. Like, I would get really angry at them, right, right in their face. So they could I'm never so forget sorry. it. <laughs> they could never forget it. And then I'd hit them. I'd probably, uh, I'd probably just look at them and go, I want your eye now. Take your eye out. And give you them know a what sp- the Bible says? An eye for an eye. Well, now I have to take your eye out. No, but, Daddy, but I... Uh, no, no, I'm going to take your eye out with a spoon. Mum, get me a spoon. Oh, but, Daddy, I thought... No, no, your eye is coming out. And then I would put the spoon right up to the corner of their eye and just put pressure on it till it almost popped out. <laughs> And just, <laughs> just see what they did. Just as a social experiment. Just as a very calming social experiment. I wonder if they would give up at that point or whether they would plead for their life. Whether kids would understand mortality or, or, or whether they would just think it would be normal and it wouldn't really hurt. Yeah, it would probably be fine, won't it? No, it's going to really hurt. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, been, I've, I've, had the, uh, I've had the spoon on the oven. So it's hot. Yeah. It's going to really fucking hurt. But but don't worry, bet. all the women love a one-eyed man. All yeah. of them. It gets them right hot in the twat. <laughs> <laughs> the kid's like, what's a twat? <laughs> well. Same thing as a cunt. Between your mum's legs, there is a sea anemone looking thing. It smells like low tide. <laughs> and it... <laughs> And actually, after shitting a couple of you little fuckers out, looks something like a <coughs> an abattoir on the day of the kill. <laughs> and uh, what it does is it controls you. It controls your mind and it controls your cock for the rest of your life, and you can't ever get away. Yeah. yeah. The lips of love. Yeah, lips of love are in... Your pants. <laughs> Look at it, Lenny. I, t- <laughs> I took my eye out. And now I've fucked the kid's head off. <laughs> the kid will never be the same again, Lenny. The kid will never be the same again, Lenny. That kid will be hooked to crack. Fuck it. Okay. <laughs> oh, that went dark. I liked it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. You don't get any of this stuff on... Uh, on uh, the Mark Commode one. You don't? No, no. That'd be wicked, though, wouldn't it? What, the other Mark... day I was watching a film, The Exorcist. It was a... <laughs> but, it was The Exorcist. Uh, yeah. 
But uh, the thing is, when I'm watching The Exorcist, I watch it for all the little effects, but I didn't see a gaping vagina with teeth. The thing is, when I watch The Exorcist, I'm so unbelievably hard uh, that I have to... <laughs> I have to beat it at least three or four times, especially when she's going at herself with a crucifix. I can't get enough. I watch it on repeat. In fact, that part of the VHS is all worn out. <laughs> Simon, Simon Mayo is just fucking looking at him. Yeah. Just like, well, what do, you, what do you mean there? Well, uh, what I mean is I get my cock out and I beat it really hard with my big flappy hands while sure, sure. she's going at it with a crucifix. And Simon Mayer was like, I haven't seen the film. I don't watch films. <laughs> well, why is it you host a film programme then? Uh, I don't know. I'm just here to be really old and miserable. Why is it you look a bit like an old woman? <laughs> why is it you look a bit, a bit like Helen Daniels? <laughs> this week we're watching Mrs. Brown's Boys. Simon Mayo plays Mrs. Brown. <laughs> uh, that's an awful TV show. Yeah, let's see the film on my mum. <laughs> poor you, sir, poor you. Doing my uh, sunly duties. You're like, that's it for the next ten years? Uh, yeah, yeah. Once a decade, I take her to see a piece of shit in the cinema. Then I'm like, sorry, mum, that's your lot. Well, She's yeah, like, what to... if I get old and infirmed and I need... No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Listen, you had your choice. You had either I look after you in your old age or... We go see Mrs. Brown Boys. You chose to go see that, so for the next ten years you're on your own. I don't care. You can fall, have an accident, break your hip, split your face open. You can get emphysema. I don't <coughs> care. I'm not looking after you. you you're done. I'm sorry. You're done. I'm not even going to help. Like I'm not even going to come see you in the hospital. That's it. I wipe, I wipe my hands of you for the next ten years. Come 2025, then I'll be back. Well, I won't live that long. Good. Good. Then I won't have to see you again. <laughs> now I'm going back to the cinema to see Mrs. Brown Boys. Film again, it's probably pretty good. <laughs> <coughs> I had to take it to see it, it was a 15. Before she wanted to go see, before she went to see uh, Mamma Mia, she was like, Would you, would you want to see that? I was like, Fuck no. <laughs> the, the, Molly says, I want to see that. I was like, Right, you go with Grandma then, because I'm not going to go and see Mamma Mia. Do you want to go see Meryl Streep sing ABBA with Pierce Brosnan and Stan Skarsgård? Gee, let me think for a minute. No, I would rather have my testicles beaten wafer thin with a stick with old barbed wire wrapped round it. As, as she said it, I had my cock out on the <laughs> uh, on the dinner table and a meat and hammer raised above yeah, it, just waiting exactly. to pulverise it into a paste. I went, "Mamma Mia!" She went, "Yeah." I went, "No." I slammed the meat hammer right down on my penis. I was like, "This is more enjoyable." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, look, children, look at me now. Look at me, emasculating myself with a me hammer. This is better than any piece of shit sing-along song you're ever going to go see. You're wrong. You're wrong. And may you die knowing that you're wrong. Look at what your dad's doing to himself. I don't even have to go see the movie and I'm still fucking beating my cock with a meat hammer. Why? It exists. Everyone around the table is crying. <laughs> and you're just like, shut up and listen to me. Colin Firth is in that fucking movie. You must listen to me. I'm a podcaster, <laughs> and I do podcasts about movies. I know everything. Now somebody bring me a fucking ambulance. <laughs> somebody get me a handkerchief and a block of ice. Uh, I'm feeling quite woozy. <laughs> I've stabbed myself in the thigh with a fork. <laughs> Just because you mentioned the name of that Fucking movie! Yeah, Mom goes, is that a yes or a no to Mamma Mia? <laughs> it's a no. Do I look like I listen to ABBA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Molly's got the DVD. Sometimes I come down, she'll have it on. And it's just like, why? <laughs> why? How many fucking DVDs? You've seen you Taken now, Molly. Why? You don't have to watch it anymore. You've grown <coughs> up. You've passed it now. She's seen Commando. She watched Stand By Me the other night with me. Right. I was like, oh. I know. Still. There's no way, like, 
my, you know, my ex was the same. You know, she she would watch Cobra and First Blood and all those kind of movies, but then she would also watch Twenty Eight Dresses, and you would just come through and go, "Why? Why? It doesn't make any sense. What are you <laughs> doing?" And then you, I would beat her about that. I mean, this may explain why we're no longer together, but I would, I kept a two by four with a nail in it um, <coughs> in the bottom of my <laughs> wardrobe. And whenever I came through to find her watching James Marsden and Catherine Hagel in 28 Dreads, I'd say, what are you doing? And I would pick up the two by four and I would beat her about the shoulders and, and hips with a, with a, a nail filled two by four. And then I would say, that, that fucking served you right. And then I would leave and go off and do a podcast. Yeah. It's, it's what's got to be done. Which, look, that's true love. That is love. Like, people can go to any which way they like it, okay? People can... <laughs> people... People... <laughs> people can say that you have to be understanding and compromise and work through a relationship. No. No, no, no. Love is brutal and it's painful and it's aggressive and it's brought on in mad, energetic spurts by movies like 28 Dresses. Or oh, 27 yeah. Dresses, or whatever the fuck it's called. It's just some of the shit that they watch, right? But I've just uh, bought a fucking 2x4 with a piece of... Nail in it, good. A rusty nail. And it, uh, I think, didn't you go for, like, the better model that has, like, a metal uh, uh, corrugated strip down one side and some glass in the other? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. you went for the... Uh, the it white... costs a bit extra. Yeah, you but, went for uh, the uh, uh, 27 Dresses Deluxe beat-em-up model. Yeah. Yeah, they're highly polished. It's it's a wonderful piece of equipment. It's on it, Amazon now, very reasonably, $38.99. Yeah, I mean, you, keep, you just go on to Amazon, and if you just type in Kate Hudson Preventer... Oh, yeah, the Kate what? Hudson Preventer uh, ZX900. My mm. goodness, that is a piece of torture equipment like you've never seen. <clears throat> it's basically a large cab. The moment Kate Hudson comes on anywhere within a 500-mile radius of the woman that you're with, uh, even if it's not on your TV, you, it says in the law, in the rules, of this, you're well within your rights to put her in this casket. It's kind of like a Iron Maiden uh, kind of meets a trunk type thing. Um, so she has to get into a fetal position. And you put it in, and, and, and when you close it, these spikes come out. And they don't pierce the skin, but they just irritate it right up, right up against the skin. It's especially weighted and measured and then you're able to uh, kick it downstairs it's a one it's an absolute wonderful uh, piece of equipment i can't anyone who's having a troubled marriage because matthew mcconaughey keeps coming on the tv this you can't live without it this is perfect yeah. and it's it, it's what what we like to call uh you know it's compromise that, that that's it's what it is and it's 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 the new feminism that's the way i look at it <clears throat> it is yeah. it is it's, it's a it really is a true, exquisite piece of technology. Um, it is. It's, uh, it's saved countless relationships. It has. Um, um, and, you know, know. And kept the NHS in business, let's be fair, because uh, they were hemorrhaging money, so they needed patients, and, you know, we provide that. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful chain of life, really. If only Matthew McConaughey knew what he was doing <clears throat> by making all those terrible fucking movies... Well, he's kind of stopped now, isn't he? It's yeah. kind of, it's, it's but I'll never, for, I'll never forgive him. Uh, if I ever see him, then I will... I, yeah. I don't care if he's another man. I will reach into his shorts, grab him by the cock and twist it off. I will, <laughs> I will just... I, I won't have any other option. I will just be so inflamed with rage um, that that's what I'll have to just twist his knob clean off with my bare fucking hands in front of his children or yeah. any children that are around really yeah all right all right all right hey it's john cross from cross though he's walking up to me right now hey john cross how you doing hey don't put your hand in my shorts it's grabbing my penis <laughs> it's ripping it off then repeatedly kick him in the face and uh just say that's for the dallas bias club you yeah, big you walk away i like you dazed and confused well thank you <laughs> Well, this show got went into places that I, I didn't know that I was going to be this confessional, but I'm really glad that you pulled it out of me, Doc. I said, just I, I should be an interviewer. I you should I, really. I think I, should, I could get this sort of uh, emotion out of. Uh, um, who's, who's usually a closed book in interviews? Mel Gibson. 
Oh, I'd love to interview Mel Gibson. I think you could really get it going with Mel Gibson. Yeah, especially if I was like, I'd be sitting there and he'd be talking about go, enjoying the water, Mel. Yeah. And he'd be like, yeah, the, the water's good. I was going, I've not spiked it or anything. No, I've not, I've not put gin in it. <laughs> uh, or vodka. And yeah. don't worry, I'm not Jewish. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not a Jew. I, I wouldn't be able I'm to Jewish. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to interview him, but you could. Yeah, I could, um, I'd ask the questions people really want to ask. I'd say, as, I would actually say to him, uh, as a Jew, um, I would love it. I would take it as a personal compliment. I don't know about that stupid policewoman <clears throat> in California, but I would take it as a compliment if you called me sugar tits. I would, I would just say, my, I think my tits are sugary, and 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 I'm so glad you noticed. Here you are, an actor, director, producer of the statue of Mel Gibson, noticing my sweet, milky tits. And I would be happy. I'd be complimented as a Jew. I would See, take that for all the Jews in the world. That, that I don't get right, because women dress like that because they want to be noticed. What, don't in police they? uniforms? They're the worst. Oh, they're so hot. Yeah. Because, like, rampant. you go into a strip club, what are they dressed as? Police women. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I prefer uh, the uh, ones in England where they have the little hats. Yeah, do you know those little hats that the police women have, and yeah. those those sweaters that kind of cover everything up, but you can tell underneath the yeah, bod's my, all there. Oh, I used to my penis used to be red raw after watching Juliet Bravo. Mm. <coughs> Whenever the bill came on at the end, and she was, you could just see. Oh, you could see her little black pumps that she was wearing, and you could see her stockings at the back. And uh, tell you what, I used to spunk up many a many a night watching that. My my dad had to call in the couch cleaners every week. It was a weekly affair in my house. Yeah, because my my days. couch looked like a glazed donut. Yeah, we did. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like like when when the glaze on a donut has gone a little hard, and it, it's slightly see through but also slightly white. Yeah, my, I, my, I used to make my sofa look like a donut, a glazed donut. But it was spunk. It wasn't sweet. It was salty. It was like a salty glaze. And uh, he used to do it daily, and he was like, it's costing me too much, son. So I'll tell you what, jizz on it as much as you like during the week, and we'll just do it once a week on a Sunday. I went, Dad, deal. And uh, Don't sit in that spot. Though. That's mine. Yeah. Well, don't That's sit mine. anywhere on the sofa. I mean, you couldn't no. sit anywhere on the sofa or that corner of the room because the wall... The carpet and the sofa were absolutely coated, sometimes three or four inches thick, with well, spunk. In in those days, we didn't have a TV in a room, did we? No. You were lucky if you had a TV and a VHS player in your room. So when you... Yeah, well, no, we didn't have it in our private room, no. So you had to do it in the living room. Of course. I mean, watching Coronation Street, Deirdre Barlow came on screen. Yeah. I just used to stand up... Pull my trousers down to my ankles. And you couldn't wait for your family to leave. Because, like, anybody, any young man knows, when the urge takes you, the urge takes you. So your dad, your mum, your sister, whoever's there, you don't even... like Grandparents it, it doesn't even him. fucking... Yeah, or your grandparents are visiting, your aunt, maybe your parents have got friends over, maybe they're having a whole party and playing Trivial Pursuit or something. It doesn't matter uh, because, you know, you've turned on the... Natural. It's, it's only, only natural. You've turned, you've turned on the TV. There's Fern Britain. Zip. You can't help yourself. You cannot <coughs> help yourself. You've got to have a good old Fern off the wrist. And yeah. uh, you, just, you just do it. And uh, my dad would have, John, <coughs> we've got uh, visitors. Fuck off. Shut up. I, you're, you were young once. Yeah. He, oh, of course, yeah. yeah he, he didn't have TV when he was young because he was born in the 40s. So he used to wank off to a flick book. His mum would sit there and do one of those flick books and uh he'd be like oh d just do that bit again just the middle five pages just a bit where she pulls her blouse open uh, her mum's right hand would get really tired of flicking the books but that's how they used to do it in the war yeah i, I used to watch neighbors and uh usually, usually oh, mrs mangle come on if mrs mangle Aww. came on, came on. I mean, oh. she's so hot, sometimes I'd uh, stick a cheek cheeky finger up me bum. Yeah, I uh, used to think that her neck skin looked a bit like a labia. So uh, <laughs> I used to want to fuck her in the neck. And that would cause all sorts of problems. I would do, I'd be around friends' houses and neighbours would come on. I would just have to hear the theme tune to neighbours while walking through the mall or something, and I would just have to beat off right there and then. 
Yeah, well, um, Mrs. Mangle was hot. People forget that Britain used to really be coated in jizz. Like, everywhere yeah. you went, there was jizz. It doesn't happen... To, now that you've got, like, private internet and people can go home and <clears throat> jizz in the privacy of their own room, it's not yeah, the same. Kind of, no, it's, it's, it's wrong. It's, We've it's lost more, something, I Yeah, feel. it's more seedy, really, isn't it? Yeah, it was so much people better when people honest. were openly wanking. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, you couldn't... Sometimes you couldn't even get off a train platform because you'd find your shoes were, were stuck in the jizz... Um, you know, because of, of, of railway porn. Because there was always porn at railway stations. Um, oh. And, you know, your train would come in and you'd be like, I, gotta, I can't! <laughs> your, your, your feet, because the rubber sole would, would, <coughs> would glue to the jism, to the spunk. Uh, and I, I don't know how many trains I used to miss back when oh. we were kids. But uh, it, was, it was Britain. It was Britain in its heyday. It was... It was uh, you know, once Thatcher came in, you know, she privatised a lot of the wanking and it, it ruined everything. Yeah. But she was good to wank off to as well. She was great. I tell you what, the crazier she got, the more, like, the Alzheimer's got to her, the more I, the more I wanted to wank off to her. Yeah. Yeah, the older she got. When um, she, when she started to look really weird, like... Uh, it's the same when the Queen Mum. Like, whenever the Queen Mum had had a major injury and had to go into hospital, the next time I saw her, having known that she'd had, like, a hip operation... I think God. it's, you know, you were on borrowed time. Yeah. I just had to wank off to her. Because I knew that one day she would die, and apart from at the state funeral, when I got to wank off at the corpse, I wouldn't get to do it again. Because once the corpse is in the ground, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But when, when she was up and about... I mean, I met the Queen Mum. I really did. I honestly, legitimately did meet the Queen Mum. And... When she came over and she came to shake my hand, I went, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm wanking under the desk. And she said, it's quite all right, son, I, I, I expect it. Thank you. Uh, the royal family thanks you for your wanking service. She actually thanked me. She gave me a little plaque signed by the Queen and everything yeah, for yeah, wanking sure. off. Yeah, and I shall see you later. She <gasps> said, she said... What's that? <laughs> just come. <laughs> she said, does one do it in, in one shorts? And I said, no, no, I have a, I have a cup. I have a special little cup that I've attached to my belt front, like a kind of feed cup, and I just tears in that, and then I, I give it to the birds, because it's a, it's a source of protein. <laughs> She's all marvellous, how lovely. It's like environmentally friendly bird feed. I was like, yeah, exactly. Go to shop. <laughs> it's good That's for the throat. Lovely. Good for the throat. I don't have AIDS. Yeah. She was like, oh, good, lots of people do nowadays. <laughs> I said, no, I'm, no, I don't have AIDS. So, yeah, that was, that was a true story. That's what happened when I met the Queen Mum. Delightful. I feel like I've, I, I know a little bit more about you now. Yeah. No, it's... it's um, I've not felt the same about the world since uh, wanking went underground. Yeah, underground you know. wanking. <laughs> when, <laughs> when, they, when they banned public wanking, the terrorists won. That's how I felt. Yeah. Yeah, we should do a documentary about that. <laughs> the rise of the rise and fall of cocks in Great Britain. Yeah, what's the internet done? I think the internet basically <laughs> taken away uh, public wanking. Public touching, public self-expression is now at an all-time low uh, because, well, I mean, quite frankly, people are going back to their apartment to. Uh, have one off the wrist and not doing it publicly. And I think that's a, that's a great shame. That's a, it's a really great shame. Back in, back in the day, you'd, you'd, just, uh, you'd get more done. Yeah. You'd be out on the street. You'd, you'd get more done. Out. I mean, I tell you what, the streets of Des Moines used to run white with cum. And, uh, and now you never see it. You never smell it. You never hear about it. It's never talked about. It gets so sad. I go to Des Moines and the whole place is empty. It's like a fucking ghost town now. People Everyone's inside wanking. On their, uh, on their ice pads, you know, <laughs> looking at pictures of, uh, I don't know, Mo Street or Bums. Helen Daniels in a heyday. Or uh, and, uh, hobos rimming each other. <laughs> yeah. And you never see them do that anymore. They crawl into the little boxes and they, uh, they just do it in there. Sometimes I try to peek in. They say, uh, well, I'm, I expect my privacy. And I'm like, no, no, get out here and do it on the street. You were born on the street, wank <laughs> on the street. 
the, the, the country's lost its identity. I think it's, it's, it's a drift and a sea of not coming. Uh, I think that uh, people are so... You know, what happens is you're on the bus. It's rocking kind of nice. You see a lady with massive tits gets on the bus. You want to have a good old rub. You want to do it. It's right there in front of you. You can practically motorboat her without even standing up. Yet you have to keep it inside. You have to bottle it all up. You can't let it loose on a bus like you used to be able to. You have to wait till you get home. But what if it's the morning? What if you go to work? What if when you're at work, one of your co-workers' buttons on a blouse just pop open? What if that happens? You have to keep it inside. You can't even go into the kitchen at work and wank anymore. They haven't even got wanking rooms at work. And you have to keep it all bottled up. But then you get home. And what can you do but just have a jolly good fucking rub? But it's so built up and it's so cogged up that it's the aggression, the anger, the, the, the swelling... And then the noise and the, the mess and the violence of it. You know, you've killed three animals before you've even finished. And uh, it's, it's ruining America. It's, it's turned us into angry wankers. <laughs> and I'm not happy about that. Not I used to be a that. happy wanker. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Now we got a, the racism a, back, the sexism yeah, it, back. It's, it's all a, back because of the wanking. It's, it's affected my life. I, I lost my house. I lost my fucking car. The police uh, came out. They took all my tissues. <laughs> I got no tissues left. Tissueless. I go down to Walgreens to buy some tissues. They won't sell them to me. I got, I'm on one of those no tissue lists. Because the terrorists, I tell you, they got tissues. Oh, yeah. They got tissues up to the eyeballs. But us, normal law-abiding citizens, can't walk into Walgreens and buy a wank rag. I tell you, it's despicable. This country's gone to shit. It's gone to the shit, I tell you. I tell you, it's gone to the fucking dogs. The dogs can't even wank anymore. I saw a dog on the street trying to wank. He couldn't. He couldn't. He was howling. He was howling. He was howling. It's a pain. I know, but some guy had put a bull clip around his testicles. They were bright blue, I tell you. Bright blue. Fucking dog's balls. I said, let him hang low, man. Let him hang free. The owner just looked at me like I was crazy. But he was one of these young kids. You young kids. They don't fucking remember the heydays. With the interweb, you know. He had it wired in. He was wearing one of those Google Glass things. Walking around with the internet plugged into his brain. Not wanking. How are you not wanking, I said. He just yeah. he looked right through me and walked away. I said, you're not normal. You're not fucking normal, you fnook. You little shit. I'll tell you what now, though. I tried to shake something out of my pocket the other day. I got stuck right down. I was wearing my brown overcoat. It got stuck right in the corner. So I'm shaking my coat quite profusely. I got arrested. They thought I was wanking. I said, I got something in my pocket. They said, well, why is your dick out? I said, my dick's always out. I'm a guy. Look at me here. I was from the 70s. (laughs) It's what we all did. Tell you what, you used to be able to lie in Central Park. You could tell the time by the sundial on my cock. (laughs) Women saw it as a compliment. Now, I'm afraid to talk to women. I remember when the presidential address used to be given nude from the waist down. (laughs) Will you put your cock on the Bible? (coughs) Mr. Kennedy, they said. He said, wait a minute, I've just got to pull it out of Maryland first. He retracted. He put his cock on the Bible. Everyone paid respect. And he became the president of the United States of America. (laughs) Right then. All right then, sir. Well, I'm on not, 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 not. Ready to go. Right. Ready to start. Three, with. two, one, go. Okay, so we start with the Warner Brothers. I go, boom, low rumbly sounds. So this was like his biggest movie, right? Yeah. I, I actually, and I'm going to admit this right now, although I like it, I don't think it's his best film. No, it's not his best film. No. 
you'd be correct in saying that. Um, but it's definitely the film that... Uh, well, it's, the, it's basically like the last big movie he does, right? Well, they tried to sort of bring him back for Exit Wounds, but it's not as big as this. This was... This, this did make a lot of money. Right, and he was the uh, producer on it as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically uh, Steven Seagal doing his Die Hard film. Um, <coughs> it's a great film, but uh, it's, it's, it's a bit too sort of like polished. If you know what I mean. I, well, I just... <clears throat> I, for me, it takes about an hour to get going. Yes. That's my main problem with it. And, <clears throat> and also, although I'm not a big fan of his acting in any of the movies, his acting is at its worst here, I think. His performance, especially when you're stuck with him and Erica Elena, or whatever her name is, <clears throat> for most of the movie, um, they're, they're not very good together, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's up? See, first slap round the face. Yeah. I just slapped that guy round the face. Look at me right oh, there. Oh, black man. I gotta Another taste black you man. <laughs> Don't eat the food. I put, I put yeah. stuff in it that kills your kind. <laughs> um, is that a? <laughs> That's his dinner. Is that a dolphin swimming with the ship? Yeah. Wow, well, dolphins love nuclear weapons. Mm. Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Gary the Buse Busey playing Mr. Joshua. <laughs> How are you, sir? I am Gary Busey. <laughs> that hat doesn't fit that guy. What's going on in here? Hey, I know you. You're in lethal weapon. I don't want to meet the president. I don't like the president. President could sit my thick looking dick. <laughs> and was also, he uh, cut his ponytail off for this film. Did he? Mm. No ponytail in this. I know. Uh, it's CG tied. I think that's. CGI'd out. I think that's why it doesn't work for me as well. Plus, he doesn't go into a coma and come out of it with a Fu Manchu Jesus beard. So we'll we'll do that. No. No, that definitely is. I love it how his hair's grown back, because, I mean, he looked like he was losing it in the last few films that he was in. Yeah. It's amazing how it's grown back. Yeah, and it stays like that for the rest of his life. Yeah. Need me later. <laughs> Who's that? I wonder sure. that picture is on the, in the background. Who's that guy doing behind him? I don't know, but he looks like a cross between Jerry Lee Lewis and Michael Dudikoff. <laughs> they're, they're bastards, son. Yeah. 50 years ago to Pamela Bascar, I'm a big fan of her work. Yeah, it's like Jeff Lawton. What a, what a guy. What an executive producer. What an executive producer. I went into him, I said, Lawton, produce me an executive. Do you know what? The very next day he had one right in front of me, some little snot-nosed kid from the city. I went, my God, have you produced me an executive or what? World War Two. Huge fucking boat, isn't it? I thought it looked really good the way <coughs> they matched the news footage to the actual footage. Mm. Nice hats again. I like being dressed as a chef. It means I don't have to wear my weave so much. I asked if I could keep my hat on the whole movie. Yeah. Is that a hat? This is my latest weave. What do you think? Because this is really... I mean, unless they got George Bush for the movie. God, yeah, Barbara, I think Barbara did. Bush was a looker, wouldn't she? Oh. I would have done Barbara Bush in the pooper. Oh, he has. Toothpick, man. Oh, listen to him. He just did his, he just did his down homey South accent, and the black mm. guy laughed at it. I don't think he really laughed at it. I think he probably had to be pointed with a stick. Go on, laugh at Cigar doing his little, like, New Orleans crawfish fucking joke. Come on. Fuck that, man. Hey, I've been hey, around for 40 years. I'm part black, haven't I told you? <laughs> I live in New Orleans. Don't be fooled by my Caucasian appearance. In Louisiana. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Stephen Scout. I know I'm standing here at the podium, but Barbara Bush is blowing me. Single <laughs> up. What a beautiful sky, what a lovely sky. <laughs> I love the attention that they've paid to the details. J.F. Lawton wrote it, look. Yeah. 
What a guy. Arnon Milchan and Steven Seagal and Steven Ruther, Reuther, whatever. Arnon Milchan. Isn't that the direct, isn't that producer of Brazil? Uh, no, 12, 12 Monkeys he did, I think. Who's the producer No, he, you're Bra- right. He, did he do Brazil? I'm sure he did. I think maybe he did do Brazil. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Wow. I think uh, Gilliam described him as a pirate. <laughs> Which is quite good because he went on to make this. Yeah. There he is. The, the ginger officer who's in every single movie and currently plays Agent Pierce on 24. Or yeah. did. I don't know if he's been in this latest season. Look at LNX tits. She's coming on the boat. I'm going to come on her. I'm going to come all over them titties. Look at them titties. <laughs> Look at him. He tried to, well, what's it? Unfold it. He's like, stick together. <laughs> Here's my favorite copy. It's my favorite page. I'm Gary Busey. <laughs> That's all Gary Busey should say whenever anyone asks him. Yeah. The hobbits. Have you seen the videos on um, uh, YouTube of Gary Busey being asked questions? Yes. They are hilarious. Why why do you have to understand this? There's little hobbits and they got little furry feet. Gary, what are you talking about? Shut up. This is all gold. This song, how many movies is this song in? It's in this, it's in The Fisher King, it's in Perfect Weapon. Gone Seagal, bust some moves. I got the flapper hand moves, Johnny. Look at me with the flapper hands. I wrote this song. I, I got the power. I, I play this with my blues guitar band. I play it like a... Petty officer right back. Oh, you're one of those creepy ginger people, you? got a you? head like a ginger bollock. <laughs> He just doesn't do the lines very well. It's just, it's. I don't know, man. I thought this felt a bit flat compared to previous ones. I mean, think of his delivery of uh, "Take you to the bank, Senator Trent, to the blood bank," and then that one where he's like, "I won't get to see you go through puberty." It's just not as good. It's just not as there's not as much passion behind the eyes. No, I think it's because they had to go for a more. Uh, it's it's a Seagal film, but it's not Seagal because I think they were just trying to mould him into a proper action star. Yeah, he's just sat there and in the back of his mind saying, like, I'm a chef, I'm a chef, I'm yeah, a he's chef. Doing the method acting. He's like, wait a minute, could I be an ex CIA chef? No, no, Seagal, you don't have to be ex CIA and everything, but I really am ex CIA. That's such a being the. When I play Jesus Christ, I'm going to be XCIA. XCIA Jesus Christ. <laughs> I played Robin Hood as an XCIA Robin Hood. <laughs> Every single character I've ever played is XCIA. I played Santa Claus. He was XCIA Santa. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Cocaine to Panama. What? What? No, wait a minute. You want to see me, Captain? This is my cocaine rock, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't seem to understand is I understand everything that is going on. Even when you think I'm not looking, I'm looking. Even at night when you're in your bunk, I'm looking. <laughs> Even when you think that you're in an enclosed space like the latrine and you think that nobody can see, I've got holes. I can see you, Gary. I can crawl about the top of the ship, open little holes you don't know are there, and I can look through and watch you poop. So don't try and get one over on me, Gary, because I've seen you poop. I've seen you curl out a turd, (laughs) Gary. I hate how you flush it so quickly, Gary, because I'd like to look at it and I'd like to pleasure myself to that here poop that you've done. I wish you'd stand up and proudly display it, Gary. Be a man. Be a sailor. There she is. Why do you think I keep Seagal around? When he rolls out a tasty foot-long turd, 
He lets me see it. He looks up through the porthole. He says, Captain, get a load of this. It's the cigar shit. <laughs> Put my pies in the oven. My tasty, creamy pies. <laughs> it's got one of his Ted's coat up in it. Yeah, it's got some of his jizz on the top. Yeah. Foot long. Foot long jizz, Johnny. <laughs> Did it on top of your pies. Captain was the original Johnny before there was a Johnny. I called the Captain Johnny because we were like that. We were so close. I only call my closest friends Johnny. Most of them I don't know anymore because I got into the sex trade. <laughs> That's what the boats were saying. And when Can't I got into them. the sex trades, my friends like Stallone, they were like, well, I don't think you should be doing it, cigar. I don't know. You shouldn't be trading in women. You should be doing the women. That's why Seagal doesn't like Neeson, because Neeson wants to break up his sex trade. Yeah. I will find you, and I will break it up. No, you fucking will. Gary Busey just gobbed his thing. That's some, that's some extra tasty fruit right there. <laughs> you taste that, lick it up. Taste my goober in your soup. That's a good line. I do like yeah. that line. That's not striking an officer. This is flappy hand in you. <laughs> that's a fucking face, you Gary Busey mook. Look at the hands. The hands are the hands are in super flap mode in this movie. Mm. Yeah, see, that's the only way you can control them. The only way to, to yeah to reduce Seagal's power is to handcuff the flappy hands behind his back. Even then, they're still flapping. Oh, they're, they're like flapping. two landed fish just going at it. I can't move them around the front anymore. I get so fucking tired. You came on board in Hawaii. Yes, sir. Then you don't know about. Oh, look at that. His makeup's running. Yep. Rabbit Nash, I want you to take a look at Chief Rabbit. When he starts wanking, you look through that hole now. You look at him. You watch him rub on him. <laughs> he likes being watched. It. I already know that the captain watches it. I was Buddy Holly. Fuck you! <laughs> I was Buddy Holly. That'll be the day. <laughs> you little shit. Let's go. He's like Judge Reinhold's sperm, this kid, isn't he? Yeah. He's like an AIDS germ of Judge Reinhold. He's my favourite actor. <laughs> I've got all his movies. This, Peace Academy 8. <laughs> Seagal secretly loves being locked in a fridge. He wrote that so that he could then sit there and eat all the hams. <laughs> he looks at the audience just about sit. What are you doing in there, Robert? I'm eating. I've, I've, eaten, I've eaten all the porks and all the beefs. They're and, uh, frozen. That don't stab me. I lick him. Professional. I, I suck him frozen. <laughs> Look at this jockey. This is Seagal playing this guitar. Yeah. Inside yeah. the fridge, there's great acoustics. Yeah. Big sounds going to back. Hello. I can't do a. I know that Rit has been asking for us to do a Tommy Lee Jones impression. I can't do one. <coughs> Call me, yeah. isn't he lovely there in his little bib and tucker? Yeah, look at you with big tits. Why did they just film the boom mic operator? There's a bit of continuity error. You're not meant mm -hmm. to film the film crew. <laughs> Erica, she's got big titties. Applaud them titties. Applaud them titties. Electric guitars, titties, guitars, titties, guitars. Juicy wants a bit of her titties. Now I'm filming her ass. God, I love this baby. When I touch the TV, feels like I'm touching the booby. This guy's from like the 1950s. Yeah. He just walked straight off the set of Grease. Yeah, oh, he did walk. Why don't you come down here? I'm going to stick you in a cake. Are you okay? I'm going to stick you in a cake. I'm going to eat the cake. I think someone just, an extra just fell over when he saw her tits and they left it in the movie. Yeah, but you would though, wouldn't you? Gary Beasy can't stop touching it, can he? No. Tommy Lee Jones is a uh, method actor, so he spent yeah. seven months on a train to rehearse <laughs> for this scene. <laughs> no, sir, no, sir. I, I've spent, spent many years on a train perfecting that little choo choo that I just did. Yeah, thank you very much. Our house, dog house. Shit house. 
spent seven months on train a train. <laughs> Method acting for this Look, role. Look, that's not even a real cake. No. How are you meant to eat that then? It's a silk mm. cake. I thought she was going to burst out com- com- covered in whipped cream. Yeah. So the girl's like, hey, I'm so hungry, I haven't eaten in two minutes, i got to lick all that off. <laughs> and then we're going to put you into my illegal cigar sex trade. That's crazy. i got okay. a special set of skills. I will find you, Stephen, and I will kill you. <laughs> You're not a real action hero, Liam Neeson. Use your head, man. I don't know why I'm doing this accent. I'm from Detroit. Go get my pies out of the oven. Please take my pies out of the oven. You don't want to burn my cum pies. <laughs> it smells if it burns. It took me five weeks to come that much. In between having sex with my creepy Asian wife. And I can't get her to let me come outside. She has to have me come inside. She has to keep everything. She's creepy and Asian. She's a hoarder. She holds my cum all the way up inside her. She got special Asian sacks for doing that. They got special cum, cum collecting sacks. She's cum collected, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Even Johnny's seen up her twice. I let Johnny have a look with a telescope. Is it, would, would you be happy if you paid a lot of money and this band turned up? This, like, sort of guy who can't in a leather sing. jacket. Yeah. Not even see, just playing out of tune harmonica over the top of yeah. it. Don't, don't you be eating my baguette. You touch you... my baguette, I'll flap a hand you. That's my baguette. Uh, I'm the, in the interview for it. Hi, would you like a, a glass of my poo? <laughs> it's runny. I, I, put lemon, I put lemons in it. <laughs> Uh, Why is interview. Tommy Lee Jones' job in this band? I don't know. In, <laughs> in, the, in the interview afterwards, they were like, they were like uh, "So how was it filming?" It was a great. It was a great shoot. You know, I um, I went on set. I did the choo choo bit, and I was on a train for seven months, <laughs> pretending to be a choo choo train. And then when it came to the, to uh, shoot that scene, I spent so long on the train, I forgot that I should have learned to fucking sing. <laughs> Things on my harmonica. Oh, hot. Oh, look how fucking fit she is. I have to say, Ellie and Axe tits are much bigger than you would have thought in that black top she was wearing earlier. Yeah. And she has done her makeup so nice. Mmm. <laughs> Busey really just goes all out. Jerry Lee Lewis is having none of it. Great, <laughs> great balls of fire. <laughs> But to be quite honest, <laughs> this, this wasn't even scripted. <laughs> no, they were filming jo- Tommy Lee Jones and Busey just ran in. Like they had to, it took five men to stop Busey taking all his clothes off. <laughs> Fucking stripping right there. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones fucked her, didn't even know it was Busey at first. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones was like, take you around the back of the outhouse, doghouse, henhouse. I'm gonna fuck you in the ass, Gary Busey. We locked him in a meat locker until after the party. Oh, it's only like 40 degrees in there, man. Where's the chief? He's in the meat locker eating all the food. He's got yeah, through he seven bison already. You locked him in there? He has to be put in there. Look, he's knocked all the sliced bread on the floor. What a fucker. Yeah, and all Steven's scandalized. Get my pies out of the oven. Fucking burn my juice pies. I made him black pies. Now I'm gonna have to tase him. <laughs> I'm gonna have to read them their rights. Who's this little fuck? Right <laughs> I think it's the uh, Toad Face Man. Yeah. For rage. <laughs> they burn his pies. We burn his pies. Gonna burn them all down now. The pies of revolution, the pies of revolution are burnt. Hallelujah. Tommy Lee Jones plays some harmonica. That's the wrong key. Don't play harmonica anymore. It's the pies and the burn the pies. That's the song it's all about. Awesome that they walk in I there. Gary Busey when he was dressed as a chick. Really? 
<laughs> the captain just looks up and goes, yep, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Next shot, you see him fucking carry music. Yeah. You <laughs> said you was my date. Now take it. I watched you call a shit out. <laughs> now I'm taking you up the shit out. <laughs> when you just before <coughs> you come, I want you to burn your arm like in lethal weapon. Put it, put the flame to your arm, Gary. I can't come unless you hurt yourself. You uh, he looked a lot bigger in lethal weapon, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Hello, Jerry Lee Lewis. What are you doing in this movie? Are you really Michael Dudikoff's dad? That's for Michael Dudikoff. Shoot you in the head. Look out, the waiting staff have got automatic weapons. What kind of catering company is that? Good shot. Told me he waited outside. He was like, only if you go through that door will I shoot you in the head. Otherwise, you would have lived. Yeah, you should have fought. Nice boots, though. You want to drink a Snapple? <laughs> oh, they shot Scotty in the knee. <laughs> Scotty? What is he from? Well, he's not. Oh, I'm just really? pretending like he's Scotty from Star Trek. How <laughs> can he do it, Captain? He shot me in the knee. He shot me in the fucking <laughs> knee, Captain. I would have turned the butt around and done everything, but he shot me in the fucking knee. Poor Aaron Bishop. Are in the nest. Mother goose, that's not Whales cool. Whales are in the nest. I came up with that. That's real radio jargon from my times in the CIA's. When I was in the CIA's in New Orleans, that's how we used to say it. We used to say, is the gumbo done? I'd say, mother goose, mother goose, the gumbo's on the run. It's done. It's in the thing, and I'm putting it on a bun. Do you, how long is it before he comes out and says that this film is based on true stories? Oh, he's he's already said it. He's already said it. This really happened when he was in... Um, he was in uh, Diplomatic Waters in uh, Paraguay when he yeah. was with the CIA. I'm really a chef. I've been a chef for 40 years. I took a bit of time off from doing my kung fu and I learned to make jizz pies. I learned how to... I learned how to slap your hand a carrot to death. I learned how to take a parsnip apart with my bare hands. Everybody loves it when I rip apart a parsnip. I'm a master of the parsnip. Then I... Let this be a one learning experience. If you resist, we will kill you and the man next to you. And then I will find your mother. I will kill her too. I'll open her mouth, I'll take my pecker out, I'll put it in her mouth, and I'll say, dinner time. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> I will bang a gong with my cock. And but you I won't really date it, will you? No, probably not. That's the way, that's the way I lock my front door every night, that is. Yeah, it is. This guy's my favourite actor. This guy there. That. Look, look at him there. I'm shitting myself. Oh, that's a lesbian. Oh, look, Kate, Katie Lang is in the movie. <laughs> Katie Lang. <laughs> she heard that Gary Busey was dressing up as a woman. She was like, I will come on to your film. I will fuck Gary Busey as a woman. Yeah, I love that song she did. Yeah. Constipation. Scissoring Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Who's she married to, Katie Lang? Uh, I don't know. Ellen DeGeneres, isn't she? No, no, Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Sinead O'Connor? I have no idea. Is it, is it Anne Hirsch? <laughs> No, Anne Hesch and Ellen uh, dated for a while, but Anne Hesch wasn't really a lesbian. It was all fake. Oh, right. Oh, she split up with her. Jamie Price split after eight years together. That's a shit. Up. It's because she came home and caught her scissoring Gary Busey. Yeah. Two thousand. Uh, it's from 2008. The return the, of the, Katie Lang. The best I'm thing mistaken is, for a man every day. The best thing is Gary Busey... When I've got to change, and I was hoping he would come out like dressed as a naughty nun or something. 
This has got a series of females. <laughs> it's just him. And he goes, I think i got to change. These pantyhose are getting too tightly. He goes out and comes back in, like, dressed as a stripper and comes back out and Tina comes back in and gets dressed as, yeah. We don't need another crass chase. We don't, we don't need another Busey. I don't know why Busey doesn't get, like, criminals in um, action movies now. Now that he's actually certifiably insane. Oh, yeah. You now leave the duty. I said duty. That means poop. Hello. I like him. I was Hitler's computer German operator. Man. This is the only way uh, back then that you could get people to see a rom com. Yeah. Yeah, now we're going to watch that movie. It's Meg Ryan's got another movie out. Everyone, by gunpoint, into the brig. <laughs> and we are going to sit and we are going to watch that delightful American sweetheart, Meg Ryan. <laughs> 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 oh, America's sweetheart, Meg Ryan. Bring up, bring up the movie. Put it in. Oh, I love the internet. <laughs> This is all I look up on the internet. I don't look up cocks and, and tits and ass and wangs and jello molds. No, no, no. It's, it's boat designs. Boat, boat schematics. Cruises are expensive, though. Best way to do it is to take a gun on and hold them all ransom. Yeah. Now, now sail me to Jersey. Now, get in there. We're all going to watch Joe versus the Volcano. <laughs> I'm the captain. Gary Busey, the captain. I think he really believed he was a captain. I think he still yeah. probably goes up to people now and says, Ha, 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 I'm Busey, the captain. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm the captain of my own ship. What ship are you talking about, Busey? The ship of life that we're all on. Commander Crow warned me that you were tricky. There used to be so many uh, cows in there you couldn't move, and he's eaten two-thirds of them. Yeah, he's like, where's, where's the other food going? It's in my belly. Hey, ain't it? It won't show just now, but wait for a couple of movies' times. You'll see it. <laughs> wait till you see me in Attack Force Z. God, that, that looks like some looks, good meat. Yeah, it looks really nice. I always think that when I watch this. I always think, that looks fucking delicious. But then I remember... That it looks Steven like Sk a predator's labia, is what it yeah. looks like. But it looks like if there was a female predator... And she was to open her legs, it would look like that. And you could probably yeah. carve bits off it and fling it about the place, and it would still quite enjoy it, mm. I'd imagine. But I don't know much about predator sexual organs, but I'm guessing. It looks a bit like that. That's yeah. why it looked tasty. But, but um, the, the fact that Steven Seagal cooked it means that I'd really like to have some of Seagal's meat in my mouth. Oh, yeah. I, couldn't do that. Do you suppose he, like, tenderizes the meat with his flappy hands? Mm. He's all like, ah, that's what. I, that's why I learned the martial arts, Johnny. It's to make this pork all nice and tender. How's that? People are eating it. They're like, why is this pork roast got like big hand marks in it? <laughs> that's my flappy hands. You get away from the table. You're not allowed to eat my pork no more. <laughs> why is this parsnip got like? Weird fingerprints in it. <laughs> I pulled it apart with my bare hands, Johnny. Why do you think I did? I'm a chef. When you call Cigar the chef, you get Cigar the chef. I don't need no knives. I don't need no pots. I cook it all in my pants with my flappy hands. I walk around for a day and he cooks up there fine. <laughs> Want some gumbo? My asshole is so sweaty, it cooks everything 350 degrees. That's the cigar way. Yeah, my cum is like beef stock. You got shit for brains, but I got shit for pies. <laughs> I, I put poo poo in the pies, Johnny. So when everybody eats my pies, they're eating a bit of poop, which is how they get shit for brains. That's how it works. I know it's because I learned biologies. <laughs> Johnny's taught me biologies. I don't know why Seagal is pluralizing everything, but it just feels natural to do yeah. so. 
I know all about the English languages. <laughs> I knows all about them. Because I live in New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> the so here boats. I'm, I cook all the gumbo that's ever been made in New Orleans. You like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Brad? I invented that. It's really cigar fried chicken. I stick my dick in the batter. <laughs> I love the way he doesn't even, like, that is the worst acting I've ever seen. He gets shot by, like, five bullets. Don't you, don't you shoot my milks. Yeah, he's shooting my hams and shooting my milks. I was going to eat that. <laughs> like Seagal could hide in a confined space. I'm six yeah, foot no. ten, Johnny. No. No, nah, can you it. imagine him leaping nimbly down? He did that and open up. His legs had come through again. I'm stuck. I love the way he checks his pulse. Oh, he's dead, clearly. I'm going to check his pulse anyway. I'm Cigar. I took medicines classes. <laughs> I know all about the biologies, Johnny. I know all about them. Yes. I know how you touch your neck and you find where the pulse is. I know because I like to stick my cock up against necks, especially when the jugular's all pulsating. Makes me come harder, Johnny's. Do you like my cocks? <laughs> Put my cocks up against your neck. That's what I do with my alleged sex traffickings. I keep them in the basement of my Alabama ranch, Johnny. My creepy wife doesn't go down there. My creepy wife feeds them muesli through a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's all my creepy wife can make, because I'm the chef in this household. She said to me one night, she said... Cigar lovely, do you want me to make you any Asian food? I slapped her about the head and neck. I only make the Asian foods. I lived in Japan. I know all about that. I don't even have to cook the fish. They eat it raw. I roll it up in bits of my skin. Yes, I, I live down to the pet shop. I buy a goldfish. I walk out with the goldfish. And I walk down the street just munching on the goldfish. Whenever it's you're sushi. Whenever you're eating sushi in a cigar household, it's wrapped in my foreskin. My foreskin is like a snake, and it <laughs> it sheds itself once every three months. <laughs> so when I shed my foreskin, Johnny, I wrap dead goldfish up in it. I feed it up with sushi. I force feed it to my creepy Asian wife. She loves it in her mouth. Put a bit of... Put a bit of vinegar da, 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 da. and a bit of piss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to taste really, really horrible. Cook it for two and a half minutes and then you have a really nice pie. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it's ice cream sundae. And that's the cigar way. That's the cigar way. I put my ice cream in a microwave. <laughs> but aren't you meant to eat ice cream cold cigar? No, I like to eat it hot. You tell me I'm wrong, I beat you about the head and neck. Stick I call it, I call it, hot creams. Hot creams. It's the cigar way. Meany looks a bit like a priest. Yeah, he does. Did you think he was auditioning for cavalry? I think so. Or, audi or auditioning to molest some children. <laughs> I thought if I dressed as a priest, I could get away with it. Meanie, you meanie. I know I'm a meanie. Oh, we've got some more comments on the uh, Under Siege thing. Nice, we'll have to read them out later. <laughs> now, I just want you to think, this whole time, while they were machine-gunning people to death, Erica Elianak has been hiding in a cake, <laughs> waiting to jump out. Yeah, but they also gave her those tablets then to knock her out. Because I was watching the movie and I was going, wait a minute, it's been a long, long time. Surely she's already leapt out of the cake. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, you know, I hope. Oh, I... She's passed out. I had my cock out ready and everything. Mm. I thought the model plane work in this was really good. Yeah. I made it out of Airfix, Johnny. It's an Airfix model plane kit. I've been making Airfixes for... 40 years. I don't even use glue. 
Do you want to know what I use to stick my Airfix things together? It's, it's all right, Stephen. I don't need to. I'm going to tell you. In fact, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Stephen, could you put your cock away? I'm going to show you how I make Airfix blankets. I'm sorry, I, I get so high. But I, I like to come. I love to ejaculate. That was a model. Yes. That's a model. <laughs> what? Tommy Lee Jones is a model. What? Tommy Lee Jones is a model. They could I love Tommy the way Lee Gary Jones. Busey clinks glasses in the most menacing way possible. <laughs> Drink that <laughs> fucking glasses! Ah! I thought he was just going to continue and embed the glass into Cole Meany's face. Yeah. Cole Meany's like, could you stop it, Gary? It's really... Fuck you! It's the way I clink glasses! Yeah. Fuck you! If I want to put glass in your face, I will. It's in the script. It's not in the script. I'm, I'm the abuse. You're indeed kimchi, buddy. Hello and welcome to generic underground government <laughs> bunker number eight. I like what you've done with the place. I don't like the map. It's too colorful. Make it black <coughs> and white and gray. Is Morgan Freeman here? No, he's not got to that stage of his career. Uh, then I don't want to be in this movie. <laughs> No, Morgan Freeman. We have, however, got a bunch of people who have been extras on Bonanza. <laughs> is Long Green here? Long Green. Is he here? No. <laughs> Michael Landon. Michael Landon's like clearly ran that table. I see you have modeled your bunker after Dr. Strangelove. I, too, like that movie. And, gentlemen, remember, there will be no fighting in the war room. The only thing you can do about it is alert the media. You don't have the launch codes. I'm also wearing a very tasty bandana and a black sweater and blue jeans. I've got very, very tight blue jeans on, and I've got a mangina. I'm, I'm unzipping right now, and uh, I'm putting my hand in. Oh, it's a little cold. What, why, why is he telling us this, Admirable? Admirable? Ad, ad, admiral. He's an admirable admiral. <laughs> He's an admirable. I'd love it if Shatner came in. He came in. Lights. Hi, I'm Admiral James T. Kirk. I'm here to help you with your ship problem. It's not that kind of ship, Shatner. Oh, fuck you, then. <laughs> I'm going off to record another album. I know things are a little... Ground control to... Major Tom. I don't know why Tommy Lee Jones is doing phone sex, but he loves yeah. it. You know, and I love this bit. Chaotic! Tom, wake up! I'm now naked, rubbing my nipples with grease off. Look at that. Look at Tommy, uh, Gary Bees is eating his hand. You know Seagal wrote that line. Yeah. I've had all the sexual diseases. I even put environmentally friendly messages in Under Siege. I'm the only man to have ever cared about the environments, Johnny. See, you can't argue. Well, there you go, you see. You can see, but I have the typical mullet of a 90s action villain. I've got the classic mullet. Do you think if you take that bandana off, it's all that hair's connected to the bandana? Yeah, just the just the long back hair. And I truly believe that if I could have been there to make my contribution, everything would have missed the sixties. Gary Busey's thinking, I'm gonna take you. <laughs> I'm gonna take you later like you've never been token before. Where do we fuck? He must have been paid a shitload to do this film. Well you hadn't done it, I mean which big movies had Lee Jones done at this point? And she just in the uh, Fugitive. It was the Fugitive already out. I'm not sure. It's same director as the Fugitive. Is it? Hmm. I will look it up on the internet. Uh, please, please, will you touch yourself in the poo hole? <coughs> uh, please, please listen to me. Uh, can you get some whipped cream, rub it on your nipples? Uh, uh, I then want you to dress up as a little milkmaid and say I'm a very naughty little girl. He made three things with Tommy Lee Jones. He did. 
are the director Andrew Davis, The Package, Under Siege and The Fugitive. And he made two films with Steven Seagal. Oh no, he'd already done uh, JFK before this. Clay Bertram. Do you have any aliases? Clay Shaw. <laughs> are you now, have you ever been a, a homosexual? Yes. It's so disturbing in JFK when he's like dressed all in gold or whatever that is for that weird I, hat I, it's years since I've seen that uh, it's one of my favourite movies no he'd done Eyes of Laura March uh, Mars rather Coal Miner's Daughter Rolling Thunder um, done a bunch of Black Moon Rising of course yeah I suppose he hadn't hit his uh, big peak yet but really. then he does he does JFK under Siege, The Fugitive, Heaven and Earth, Blown Away, The Client, Natural Born Killers, uh, Blue Sky, Cobb, Batman Forever, Volcano, Men in Black, U.S. Marshals, uh, Double Jeopardy. I mean, he just keeps going at that point, knocking them out, knocking them out, knocking them out. Pretty good run of it, Tommy Lee Jones had, right? Yeah. That was in Men in Black. Did you see that? Did you see that, Stephen? I did not. Now you're seeing all the secret hiding places the captain had to watch people. Yeah. That's how Seagal's able to manoeuvre around the ship, is using yeah. his secret peaky holes. Yeah, because he, he was good friends with the captain, he used to go around. Their, their biggest obsession in life was trying to watch Gary Busey take a can. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call it curling, but not, not anything that you would have in the Olympics. It should be in the Olympics, Johnny. Taking a curly shit should be a matter of national pride. I take pride in my curly poo-poos. I like to call my creepy Asian wife and say, Look at that. I did that. Yeah, I did that. And then I like to sign it with my pen. I have a special poo pen. <laughs> I keep it by the toilet. <laughs> it's so that if anyone's working in the sewage plants... And they see my turdy floating pie. They know it's mine. <laughs> that looks like some party, doesn't it? Yeah. He's got, he walks in there, he's just like, they had a great time. Without me, they didn't even get to eat my jizz pies. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee if they'd eaten my jizz pies, it would have been nicer. She's not asleep in there. She's waiting to come out. Oh, buttocks. <laughs> Tetes. They're fake, aren't they? Oh, yeah. It's not my music. I'm not playing on it. See how he reached in then? Yeah. They, they had to uh. cut it because it... <laughs> I'm going to... I produce this movie. I'm going to reach in and touch your boobies. Oh, yeah, it's surgery on the... <laughs> Look at this acting. I, I hear Meryl Streep watches this when she's out of ideas. Oh, Meryl Streep uh, hates her for this role. Yeah, because Meryl Streep wanted this role. <laughs> but Meryl Streep's titties were too good. Yeah. And the director said, people won't believe your titties are that good, Meryl. Yeah. They'll believe Erica because she's had work done, but you haven't had work done and no one can believe that your titties are that perky. Yeah. Even now, Meryl Streep's titties are like milky white. There's no wrinkles on them, no sag, no nothing. They are absolutely, perfectly pert milk. They're, she has the breasts of an 18-year-old cheerleader, Meryl Streep does. <laughs> it's, abs it's absolutely true. Um, you should put that into Wikipedia. Dame Helen. <laughs> <coughs> Dame Helen Mirren told me. Who are you? Are you you? Like, yeah, let me see your boobs again, and then we'll carry on. Don't let me just see them. Let me lick them. You're a cock. Uh, I just want to put my cock in you. Just the tip. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Dr. Strangelove. Some bitch in the middle. 
That's a weird. Listen, thing. Dimitri. Listen, Dimitri. We can solve the problem, Dimitri. Eight of them especially. Nuclear tipped. Two hundred and twenty kilotons each. Mr. Brake. No, I like you too, Dimitri. Are you doing Dr. Strangelove? Yeah, you've never seen it? No. Oh, man! Dr. Strangelove's one of the greatest movies ever made. You have to see it. You'd love it, dude. Seriously, I've... best role Peter Sellers ever had. It roles, isn't it? Don't he do a few? He does three roles in the movie, yeah. There's a beard on the TV in the background, look. Yeah. The guy on the plane said, Please do not pay any attention to the missiles that are about to be fired from the ship. Please just pay attention to my beard. <laughs> By 2012, I want everyone to have this beard. <laughs> Wait a minute, did that guy on TV just say we all have to grow beards? That's precisely what he said. Well, I for one am going home right now. I'm going to eat a lot of meat, red meat. I hear that helps with beard growth. I think Baldy over there is shit out of luck. They're all bold. Ooh. Model. Model time. It's only a model. This is one of the greatest models ever. Look at the details on the models. I don't like films, but I do like models. Can you imagine Mark Cousins ever watching this movie and, and critiquing it? I bet he secretly loves it. When I watch Under Siege, it does something deep down within me. The lighting, the shade, the flashing lights. Who knew that it was all really an allegory for Marxist oppression? Who knew that what Seagal was trying to say was that in a way we're all trapped in a metal closet. <laughs> we're all secretly screaming to get out like babies in the womb. When I watch Under Siege, I feel like a baby in a womb. When I've eaten one, I feel like pudding. That's our natural review of Mark Cousins that he did on Movie Drone. Which really should have been changed to movie drone. Yeah. Why when the I, fuck did they get him into that? When I watch John Carpenter's The Fog, at first I see the influences, I see the fear, I see the fear. Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! I just want to beat your head into a ground. Take a shit on your mouth. <laughs> Just really hurt my hand, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's worth it. Just pretend it was Mark Cousins. Uh, oh, I will do. It's like a, if it, if it's, if you just like put a little voodoo curse yeah. on your uh, on your hand, Mark Cousins sitting somewhere is going. My face really hurts. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden my face has gone really red. My nose is bleeding. <laughs> I like the taste of blood, the iron, the salt, the feeling of life itself. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Talk normally! Oh, I bet he can't do any dirty talk, can he, when he's having sex? I'm going to put it in you. <laughs> and take it out. And put it back in you. Imagine gonna... phone sex with, with Mark Cousins. I'll take the tip of my pinky finger, I'll put it into your ass. But when I'm doing it, I'm really thinking about the Stalinist purges and the Battle of Passchendaele and about Warren Oates and about Marilyn Monroe and about Jackie Kennedy and about America's place as a third world nation and as... Oh, I just came. And the woman's on the other end. I didn't even get to, st I didn't even get to stick anything in my twat. <laughs> I bet when she comes out, he's like, then I think of Judy Dench. <laughs> and then I, then I, oh, I feel a little bit of now. Thanks for that, love. Your organs remind me of the juxtaposition between the night in the seventh seal and what Kierkegaard is really saying about God and the belief in... Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! The history of film... Shut! Shut it! 
CH53 Echo. If I wanted to see any fight in a ring, <coughs> it would be Steven Seagal versus <coughs> Mark Cousins. That would be my favorite fight of all yeah. time. The way he moves his hands, graceful like a gazelle, but clumsy like a... Shut the fuck up, my cousin. He flappy-handed me. <laughs> I flappy-handed you. When Seagal flappy-handed me about the face, I felt my cheekbones crack. The cracking was not unlike Bridge Over the River Kwai. Shut up! <laughs> oh, and Alfred Hitchcock. Shut up! Just, just die! Please die. I mean, that, that TV show he did, The History of Film, the first yeah. three episodes are all on, like, obscure, bleak, Dutch, Russian, and Lithuanian filmmakers. This guy, Alec MacDibblethich, projected his movies on wood, wood that he'd stolen from a church. Shut up! <laughs> Doesn't mean they're good. <laughs> Reminded me of Albrecht Dürer. Oh, for fuck's sake. Has it got tits in him, or? <laughs> in no, the first five minutes. Shit. Are there tits and or does someone get their pancreas torn out? No. Then it's shit. I like to believe that Mark Cousins watched the first five minutes of Punisher Warzone and wept for there were no more films to see. Yeah. Because he just watched it and he went, that's the greatest opening five minutes of any movie ever and I can't exist anymore on the planet. And he just went away to, like, dark Africa where they were making some documentary and he just shot himself in the throat. I've seen Punisher Warzone and... <laughs> Yay! Tommy Lee Jones is like, it'll all go away on payday. It'll all go away on payday. <laughs> I wonder how much he got paid for this. A million? At least. She's dressed as a member of E17. Yeah. The fit one. What, Brian? Yeah. Little beard. I've had him. Yeah, little legs. You fucked him in the, uh, in the, uh, station we covered, didn't you, when he performed at your school? I did, yeah. He still writes on Twitter about it. This is Seagal's lesson all about feminism. Well, actually, I have two rules. One, I don't date musicians, and two, I do not kill people, okay? It's, such a, it's not even a joke that makes any sense. That joke literally makes less than sense. There's sense, then there's that joke. Well, no, does it mean that she doesn't date musicians, but she won't kill any bitch, but she'll kill a musician? Does she kill a musician later? One of the band. I've no idea. I like to ring that bum. <coughs> I got rid of him. <coughs> He's a bit old for it. He's a bit old for everybody. He just doesn't. He doesn't like carry himself. It's just there's no effort. It's just literally Seagal walking around. It's like there's no effort to be anybody or do anything. Do you know what I mean? That's good though. More of that. More of that snapping necks and all that. Oh yeah, the throat punching. Yeah. Yeah. Look, he's stealthy, isn't he? And he's stealthy. Yeah, you wouldn't see him, six foot four guy. God, can't you in hands? Yeah. You wouldn't, see him. you wouldn't see them flapping in the moonlight. Yeah. Did we bring some salmon on board? No, it's just his, his hands. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not going to see that backpack, are you? No. Put that in there. I'm going to... What do you do, Eleanor? I think back in the day when she was on Baywatch and uh, I first watched this, I think I about uh, had a shit fit. Yeah? Yeah. She's done some action movies by herself, though, right? Possibly. I think so. <coughs> What's that with his hand where he does that? Oh, flappy hand, sir. What's that? This is my magic phone. I created this. What is that? 
It's my toy. You don't get to play with my toy. I keep my toy to myself. You don't touch it. Are you hear? You don't touch it. I put this together. It's my toy. I get to play with it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Eric Ellenak. She started her career in 1982 with a little known film called E.T. She's in E.T.? <laughs> She's the girl that Elliot kisses. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Baywatch, Under Siege, The Be- Beverly Hillbillies, Chasers, uh, Bordello of Blood, uh, Captive, Charades, mm. Stealth Fighter, Final Voyage, did those with Ice T. Um, Should we read the comments out, dude? Yes. Are right. you going to do it as Rodney Corbett? Right then. So I thought, any of you lot got anything to say about Under Siege? Warning, I'm reading comments out as Ronnie Corbett. Uh, Jason Ritter. Doc, you guys should do some Tommy Jones impressions. Uh, well, we've been trying, right? We'll have a, yeah, have a, we've had a go. We've had a go. Uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to do it, but, I mean, we, we've tried. Yeah. Peter Osmond. Eric and Ed Dix did so incredible. They are incredible. They are incredible. Fake. And, and, and too fake for my liking. But but incredible, nonetheless. Uh, Jason Ritter, how would it... How would... No, 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 listen. How, how would Jason Statham or The Rock improve under siege? Well, they'd both be better actors than the people who are in it. Yes. But Statham would be the best. Of course he would. But if, if Statham was in under siege, it would be a five-minute movie. Yeah. Because he would obliterate these people in no time. You couldn't lock him in a fridge. Yeah, I don't fucking cook. Uh, Peter Osman, at what point did a former Special Ops Commando Black Ops Rangers Special Forces soldier's career does he decide that he no longer wants to kill people but make soup and bake cakes? It's a good question. I think it's, isn't it in Panama or something they talk yeah. about? Yeah. I just want to cook now. Because he lost all of his team and then he came home and punched a superior officer in the mm-hmm. face. Mm-hmm. And then the captain, who used to do sexual favours for him, dress up as a little milkmaid and stuff, uh, he invited him onto the ship. Yeah. On the understanding that Gary Busey would take over dressing up as a little milkmaid. Yeah. Uh, Paul, I'm going to go down. Uh, Paul Bianco, she... She, she was a crappy stripper who pops out the cake with her eyes closed and becomes a weapon specialist about 50 minutes later into the movie. Don't make sense. Mm. What a tits in the movie. In fact, by the end of the movie, isn't she, hasn't she signed on to the Navy? I think so, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Steven Seagal, special Navy. It's a uh, special Seagal Navy, Johnny. We don't, we just do it in our bathtub. <laughs> I sit there with little toy boats. Uh, Sloan McDonald was playing a cook in the origin of was playing a cook the origin of Seagal's weight gain and obsession with eating everything in sight. Yes. Um, oh, Peter Osmond, no, I think it started with half past bread. Very nah. good. There's a few more. What's it? Well, Alex. I know the fat didn't show up until around then. But perhaps just playing a cook got the juices flowing, so to speak. Peter Osmond said it started to show a bit in exit wounds. Uh, Osmond uh, is a punning genius. Yeah. Puntastic turn. Uh, Alex Taylor, I wore the Eric Lalamiak strip tea scene out on my VHS copy. Obviously, dare. I don't know why, because uh, when she wears that hat uh, and, you know, the uh, the big camouflage gear, I don't think she looks that hot. Or do you think it means the bit with the tits? I think the bits with the tits. Yeah. I actually wore out the scene on my VHS of Gary Busey dancing around dressed as a woman. Yeah, I did. I just kept watching it. Rewind. I can't uh, tell you the amount of jism I spilt watching that scene. Mm-hmm. Kevin Connolly, switch your braid off, watch, that is all. And I think that's 
that's a good comment. Yes, that's all you've got to do with this film. And who is Kevin Connolly? Kevin Connolly, that is a guy I met uh, doing stand up. Oh. Nice. Yeah, very funny guy. Yet again, Alan Moore complains about one of his comments being made into a movie. Alan Moore's always complaining. Oh, I'm hanging around. I wonder what the budget was for this. Uh, 20 pence. Is that new pence or old pence? Old pence. Ah, there you go then. Doubloons. 20 doubloons. Yeah. Stealthy. So stealthy. That's such a good way to be, uh, stealthy. Way out of the gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm with it. Right in front of me. I like these two people carrying her, the way they look so confused by what they're meant to be doing. They look like the least... I just look confused people. I like that move though. The way yeah, that, that is that. a good kick. First time I think he's ever kicked properly, isn't it? No, but he kicked, but then he did like the double tap on the forehead, then he twisted the guy around and shot him through the back. I thought that yeah. was a nice move. See, when it gets to this bit and he starts killing people, it's great. So this bit I liked a lot. That's awesome. Somebody's at the door. GYSA Erica. Although the four of them look like they're trying to put together some kind of novelty band. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was in. <laughs> I was in the Buddy Holly story. So clearly I'm singing and playing guitar. Colm, you're the drummer, because clearly you're a, a twat. Tommy, you just play harmonica, do whatever it is you do. Hit a button. What would the black guy do? Saxophone. Oh, definitely. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's doing, he's doing his set list. Yeah. First, we're going to start off with Who's Going to Take You Home Tonight? Drive by the Cars. Have you heard that song? It's a classic. I've heard it. Next up, we're doing Layla by Eric Clapton. I bet they fucking love you now, huh? <laughs> Derek and the Dominoes. My favorite. We're going to do the full eight minute version. And the piano play off and everything. What is that? Why has she got that cap on back to front? No, I'll take it off. And every time he says sub, do you think he's going, ah, oh, sub? I want a subway sandwich, Johnny. Me and the captain used to fuck one. <laughs> this movie's so goddamn long, I need to eat every five minutes. I don't think they're saying that. I think they're saying, leave us in here. They're saying, don't come in. I've just cut, wanked off into a cup and Johnson that I've <coughs> just paid him five bucks to drink it. <coughs> that would a great time. <laughs> don't come in. I'm half naked in here. Everyone's taking a turns to blow me. <coughs> I gave them all a cake. The director's that. Thank God, he's just let one go. Oh, thank God for that. we got all the ethnicities in here. <laughs> it's like the United Nations. It's like the United Nations. The United Nations of America. Yeah. Puts the door back on and what's it? Does it shut again? Ah, let's gangbang. I love the way he says the old guy. <coughs> Who's this? Who's this fucking old guy? <laughs> the guy should have been like, oh, I'm just a character actor. Uh, I just came off the set of a Disney movie about a giant bear. <laughs> what do you mean a giant bear? Well, we all kind of cuddled this giant bear. It's a Disney movie. What's it called? I want to see it. Oh, it's called... Him. Bear cuddles. <laughs> Is that, did you really make a porn film? Oh, yeah. I did. I fucked a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I did while I was fucking the bear? I stuck it in. 
and I left it there for a while. And then I started to pump. The bear looked up at me and said, why the big paws? <laughs> The way Seagal looks at him. That guy just came. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I keep sucking him up. Looks like Godzilla's doing a pee pee on him. We gotta stop Godzilla right away. Bet that spells of asparagus. We gotta save them. I just say fuck it. I try and get off the ship. Every man for himself and all that bollocks. Not the captain. In the navy, remember? It's not a job. Let's do it. I'm being fancy. I'm fancy. I'm going. Hey. What the hell? I have absolutely no skill, knowledge. I didn't even want to be part of this. Now all of a sudden I'm going. Yeah. It's, it, I think uh, what Peter Osmond said, she, her, she really has no role in this film. It's just a case of, you, you had the chance to get off. She was hot off of doing Baywatch. She'd be in it. She'd show her tits. She'd show her tats. Yeah. That's why we had her in it. We had her in it because she'd show her tats. Yeah. That was, the, that was the whole audition. We just brought her in and we said, hey, are you sure she tats? She did. She just did it right there in the audition. I was like, you're hired, bitch. <laughs> Get out. Do you know what? Even though we'd hired her because she'd showed her her tats, we still saw 50 other women that day. And they all showed us their tats. I tell you what, I couldn't walk straight for a week. Oh, I'm feeling a packet of jammy dodges. I looked at tats all day and ate jammy dodges <laughs> and wanked off. I think that's a job in Hollywood. Oh, that's my job in Hollywood. <laughs> Shit! Shoot him. Shoot him. He's going to hold you back. Shoot him. Yeah, that's not, uh, that's clearly sailing. That's not, um, that's not just ported up somewhere. Look at that, they're building a stage. Right, the rebel doers will sail straight in the dark and we'll put on a show like nobody's ever seen. Now, I gotta get everybody in the chorus line. What are you gonna do? Belt. Is I want you all to line up. You're gonna be the bass, Johnson. You're going to be the treble. The You're going to be the alto. I need some of you on ukulele. <coughs> He's Admiral Bates. When he was a boy, he was Master Bates. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, cigar customer service. How can I help? What's it? You will welcome to ride back's drive through. <laughs> what, what is your order? I, I take the jizz pie. I ain't got any more. I ain't got any more chicken nuggets. <laughs> yes, sir. Limits Air Group is our backup. You understand that? Not really. It's root. Yes, sir. Now, since your ass is on the line, sailor, I authorize you right now to do whatever you can. You haven't seen my ass, but my ass is like a goddamn peach. Two, two peanuts and a handkerchief. <laughs> Johnny saw my ass one day, couldn't sleep for a week. He was so excited by it. And who's she? She's just sitting there doing nothing. She's falling asleep. Yeah. She keeps doing that thing where she keeps trying to pretend like she's listening around, she's part of it, waking up. Right, keep going, dude. I will literally be back in 30 seconds. No problem. Masterful shooting there by Steven Scow. The two-handed gangster look. Well, why does she do that? By rights, she should be shot dead at this point. 
and the film would be better for it. Got his, got his cult, regular cult there, Steven Seagal. And he's doing it all right. Oh. He killed one of the Chocker brothers. Yeah. Timmy, Timmy. <laughs> Ow, Barry! <laughs> Barry, you cunt! I'm dead. Look at these extras, where did they get them from? They're all awful. They don't. They don't look like a crack to commando unit, do they? They look like they're on crack. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I like the '90s gore as well. Yeah, this was cut to shit in England. <laughs> that would never oh. happen. That- uh, they're making a... Uh... Oh, I'm making a Wendy house. I always put my dagger down. Carlos! So, this is through. Slits all the throats. Nice. Oh, cock slice. Oh, I killed Jerry Seinfeld. The flappy hands are all over the place in this movie. Oh, yeah. Flap, flap, flap. Oh, that hurts. <coughs> that was cut, absolutely cut to shit in England. Well, of course it was. But it was designed so that the close-ups could be cut out. Yeah. Steven Skull really got treated badly by the BBFC for cutting shit out of his films. And probably because they'd all fallen asleep halfway through. Yeah, but... It, it, Oh, hello there. You've come to the customer services about the bombs. For holding the vote to ransom due to nuclear weaponry, press four. <laughs> if you'd like to speak to somebody else, stand the line. S- smuggling narcotics, press five. <laughs> if you'd like to hear the menu again in Spanish... Press six. Listen, I'm going to put my account on the line. Zee, Zedure. Numero uno. The technology in this film is fantastic. Oh, it's the state of the art. What they're inside is not a uh, nuclear uh, sub uh, nuclear boat. They're inside. <laughs> the, they're inside the internet. Well, yeah, Colt Meany still lives there. That's why you haven't seen him recently. Yeah. It's because he re- realised there was all that porn on the internet. He's like, I'm staying here. Fuck it. I tell that I'm no fool. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that big rope. It's a big rope, isn't it? That's the girl's belt. What is? That big rope. Beautiful sight, huh? I did that. <laughs> See what my gun did? It went. We're sending in the uh, the moustache brigade. Yeah. Watch what, chaps? Scales on there somewhere. Has everybody got your potato guns? No need for proper violence. We're caught in a fireworks display. <laughs> Nobody told me it was the Peruvian holiday. This girl's like, couldn't they see the fireworks? <laughs> Is that the Fourth of July? Yes, sir. Lost them all. We have no choice now, but. Oh. <laughs> what about that? I wish the guy had just put his glass down and gone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's been like, so wait a minute, we sent two people in and they've blown up both things. What a bunch of cunts. Get, put me on the phone with them. Put them on. You're being a bunch of cunts. We just want to save the people we've got on the boat. Oh, yeah, just keep your weapons, I don't care. <sighs> I'm out of ideas then. Done.
He didn't even die, did he? He's asleep. Yeah. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> what kind of crazy shit is this? Why didn't you? I see you've had an accident. You fell down and fell asleep. Call me in for crazy. doing this. You are going to stay in the internet <laughs> for the rest of your life. <laughs> now, put this up your butt for safekeeping. I call it a butt plug. Measure things, because I know how to do math. I am Russian sub-captain. How with you? beard and sweet jacket. Hello, and let me come alongside you. I am authentic Russian sub-captain. I... I met the doctor. I spent years on ship with Captain Birdza. I spent some time in Russian gulag getting blowies from the lifers. It was a good time. I told them it would lower their sentence, but actually I had no kind of authority. Is that one more one of them? Well, not normally. Seagal doesn't use a condom normally. <laughs> That's where I keep my treacle. Look at my <laughs> treacle, Erica. I keep it in a war casing. That's because it's Seagal's special recipe. This will blow your head off. It's See my special this? molasses recipe. I'm Steven Seagal. Only the Seagal family kitchen knows how to make this. I bet, I bet the... Uh... Like, we got product placement by Jurex. Jurex? How are we going to put these in the film? Well, I have no idea. Let's just show Sigal one, wrap him one, and do something with it. Because that's supposed to be Sigal, isn't it? <laughs> I thought that was Russ Abbott <laughs> doing his Basil and Bond character. That's who it's based on this film. Yeah. Wait if Seagal really tried to do this, he would be so out of breath by the time he got to the boat, he would probably have a coronary. He just seemed float fast. <laughs> I, I tried to <coughs> stop. I can't. Oh, okay. I'm going, people. I'm gone. <laughs> He's so stealth that people see him. <laughs> I don't know why you are shouting. Just shoot him in the tits. I think they do get him then. I think they get his arm. Yeah. <laughs> he gets out of the water and he's got there. What's it? He sees arms. That's what happens if you eat Seagal's molasses and then fart. <laughs> What's that smell? It smells like shite. Did he just do a fart in my face? Was it a <coughs> flaming poo-poo? Did that curl up like the Captain Nikes? Cole Meany does not appreciate being flamey farted on. I will take you down, Seagal, I will. You see if I don't. You see if I don't. I could beat you in a fight. You better believe it. You're incredible, Rebbe. It's a shame you're not cooking for us. In bed. Just tell me he was a musician. So the guy's like, now we can be together. You shot a man. I can only fuck a woman who's killed someone in cold blood. First night I was with my creepy Asian bride, I sent her out to a nearby farm. I said, I'm not going to stick it in you till you brought back the head of one of the shepherds. <laughs> what do you want me to stay with the rest of the bed? Bring that back as well. It, it tastes good and good, Bob. We're going to have it spit-roasted. 
I bet that there. Bet he went to cut, he was like, oh, I wish I had really laughed some more, you know. <laughs> I wish I had that. Why is he northern? I don't know, but... I wish I Gary, had... Gary Busey is northern. Yeah, he's from uh, Lancashire. Yeah. You're right. No, it's Gary Busey. What are you going to use that for? It's my sex aids, goddammit! Go get them! I'll fix it, go now. Jim will fix it. I need a rubber raft, half a tube of lube, and a baseball. Oh, and a watermelon. And a, a grappling hook, and a hammock. Just keep getting things for me. <laughs> <laughs> a mug of oval tea. An, an egg whisk. Several large donkeys. Talk to me. Oh, no. Hello. I ain't keeping money in the internet. I've been sitting on a vibrating egg. <laughs> my buttocks are sticky with my juice. <laughs> it's because I didn't even get undressed to, to do my little naughty sex whiz. I do like it when you put a gun next to my eye. I like sitting in a puddle. I love the way it's the girls just now sauntering around the deck as if everything's yeah. okay. Go for a fucking stroll. Put my hoodie on, John. I'm just never walk around the deck. It's beautiful out here this time of night. I like to call what I like. I like to do what I like to call crop dusting. It's when I have those little, like, put, 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 put farts. I like to walk about the deck. Let my little buttocks go. I put, 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 put. I <laughs> like it because like machines go. I like it because you're gonna get the full brunt of it in your face. Can you smell that? <laughs> that wind going through Erica's hair. That's my put, put farts. <laughs> oh, I love starbursts. <laughs> they used to be called <laughs> opal fruits. Hey, you're an old guy. Have you got any opal <laughs> fruits? <laughs> I'd also like a boost. Can I have a boost? I would also uh, like a Three <laughs> Musketeers bar. I, I got the last Three Musketeers bar. I've made the internet come back on. Yes, I have. <laughs> Why don't you come in and I will show you some Villa the Visp cartoons. <laughs> So girl's like, so girl's like, hey, did I tell you, I got this camembert collection. we got to put my camembert somewhere safe. So let's put my camembert in this missile. Put him in there. That's it. I like my cheeses nice and safe. <laughs> They're worth a lot of monies. Look at that right there. It's the smelliest cheeses. I put them all together. But they're nice and soft cheeses with a powder on the outside. I like to stick my little cigar in between them, if you know what I mean. Cigar so thing. This is how we make missile babies. We put the missile cock and the missile tube and repeat in our. See those black switches? I want you to fucking tase them. They shouldn't be there. They're nasty, nasty switches. Only ever touch white switches. He's working with the black guy, though, isn't he? Put my cheese in there. Don't you squish my cheese. <laughs> we're going to PR this out to, the, to an island. They're firing at us. They're just desperate. Smell like cheese. <laughs> I believe that is camembert. Those are Starbucks. Opal fruits. It used to be opal fruits, Johnny. <laughs> just, just go with it. I only like the tropical flavored ones, though. Don't give me no strawberry. I only want the tropical flavored ones. I only like the pineapple. Thing.
Did you enjoy your trip, Tommy? Someone firing cheeses at us. Quick, get underground. They're firing cheeses at us. Crazy bastards. Put more of my camembert in there, Jack. What is that? Is it a wing? We're gonna try and make this fly. It's a bow plane. Two zero four degrees. Two zero four degrees. It's working. I like playing computer games, Johnny. I'm really good at them. All right, E four. This should sink that battleship. <laughs> I like that this is really an old arcade machine, like a really old one that has. Need seven people to operate. Oh, shit. Oh, no. That was my last cheese. It was a flaming yacht. And they shot up all the hams in the fridge earlier. What am I going to eat? He's got one of those like, T-shirts, one of those T-shirts that make you Hyper Global sweat. Color, yeah. they were called. Or Global Hyper Color, sorry, not yeah. Hyper Global Color. It's one of them Hyper Global Color things, Johnny. Whoa. This wasn't even scripted, he just came in and did this. Oh, my life. Saturday morning cartoon. I used to watch He Man, sometimes Thundercats. Does Rarity Rouse ever remind you of Lionel? It does me. Creepy German man. Prawn. Swedish cock. I love Swedish cock. Tomahawks! He would look better with a leather cap, don't you think? Yeah, and maybe like. Arseless leather pants. Yeah, and a tash. Oh, God, can you imagine? I'd be scared of that guy. I'd be scared that he would touch my bum bum. Yeah. But secretly excited that in case he did. Ah, you want me to leave the internet now? Mm -hmm. I'm down here and I don't understand what all these lights are doing. I'm going to be Pressing some buttons like they're a clitoris. Orgasm. That's just a ferry. That's just like a passenger ferry. Yeah. To turn around and look at Gary Busey's going. You shot the wrong way, douchebag. Now explain this to me because <laughs> he says that he's destroyed the. The machine. Yeah. Yet they still managed to recall the missiles. Uh, Steven Seagal called in some ex-CIAs to help him. Or we now like. know what Tommy Lee Jones sounds like after he's come. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I sound a bit like this. Ah, oh, make me a cup of tea. I sound like this. <laughs> That's how I sound. <laughs> I did it all. I'm so sorry. What's the flight time? Yeah. <laughs> I know you said. <laughs> no, in your head. <laughs> I, I specifically aim for your hair because you said not to. Now it's all in your hair. I'm just a rule breaker. Don't put it on the pillow. Don't put it on the pillow. I don't want to have to do laundry. Just get the fuck out. Never come back. Harry Connick Jr. Harry Connick Jr. And Eli Roth. Yeah. 
I love how Seagal's just now in his jeans. When did he change? Um, I don't know. I think it. I think it's in his contract. He has to wear his mangina jeans at least once in a movie. Yeah. They gotta see my mangina. That's what all the ladies love. I'm going to go up here. He's a scary looking dude. He is. Cool. Yeah. Imagine if you got shot by that little creepy German. That'd be a. That'd be a shocking way to die. on the back of you, Tom. Throat rip. Oh, it's like Velcro. You think, do you think your, your neck is just like Velcro? It didn't crack. cut back, but he's just eating it. Yeah. That tasted delicious. I call it crackling. <laughs> I call it jerky. Ah, sailor jerky. I love a bit of throat ripping. I'm inside the internet. Mm, shit. Who'd have thought I'd meet Tommy Lee Jones's on the internet, says. No, the thing is, you think of like a uh, Steven Seagal film, you know, where at the height of his star power. You'd be like, God, who'd you hope the next villain is he's up against? You'd probably go like, I don't know, there's so many, isn't there? Tommy Lee Jones? Yeah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> he was in JFK. I don't watch historical movies. JFK, you know, Tommy Lee Jones. He was the gay guy. <laughs> and he's fighting Steven Seagal. Yeah. Painted in gold. With wings on his cock. I've got to watch JFK again. It's been years since I've seen that. Made a few films with Oliver Stone, didn't he? Tommy Lee Jones. He did. He did. Heaven and Earth, uh, Natural Born Killers and JFK, I think. Yeah. Hey, Oliver. Gotten over it yet? What? The war? <coughs> yeah. I've got an idea. How about we do a movie about how America killed lots of people? And we'll do it really critically of America and people. <coughs> My God, Oliver, I never heard such a great idea for a movie. That sounds like the kind of movie I'd like to be in. So, yes, I will be in that I'm surprised movie. after watching this that Oliver Stone didn't put Seagal in the movie. I'd have loved to have seen him in um, Nixon. Playing Nixon? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> what I like is that they so clearly have to, like, do it so that you don't really see them together because he clearly can't do it, can he, Lee Jones? No. He's I mean, look at the speed the girl's doing it with. No, also, you if you'd cut yourself across the wrist, I don't care how hard and evil you were, first of all, it would be pissing blood. Secondly, you would be in absolute agony. Oh, no. Ooh, time out. Oh, give me a minute. I'm Wait a go. minute, I'll put it in some lemon. Oh, I put <laughs> in some lemon by accident. Oh, now I've rolled in some salt. That's going to look like a real manly little scar that he's going to have. Ow. Good kill, though. <laughs> I just killed the internet. <laughs> it would be another 40 years before the internet came back. I rebuilt it by cock. <laughs> Blowing up one model. <sighs> Guys, yeah. we managed to blow up one of Seagal's FX models. Made out of spunk? It was. Thank God for that. Spunk and cheese. You pissing? No. 
pouring out some water. I, I was really pissing. And now I'm tonguing my piss. Yeah. <laughs> I like this now where he, uh, yeah. I do it. I'm good on the uh, computer games. I played Super Mario Bros. Give me the secret unlock code for level 10. think that recalling a weapon or even firing a weapon in the first place would be a bit more complicated than just a few digits. It's almost like yeah. logging into Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think it'd be able to play a bit more Andy as well if we uh, just didn't have fucking wars and didn't have to uh, make them? Yeah, that would also be good. Look, the little man who was there, uh, in it, came out little midget. <laughs> this was my favourite bit, was when um, <coughs> they all started cheering and then the guy was like, we need to recall the planes. <laughs> I thought it would have been a much funnier and better ending if they didn't recall the planes. <laughs> so put the phone down. Let's just put the phone down. I put the phone down, don't worry. I got a Zodiac here and, uh, the planes are on their way, we can't do anything about it. Yeah, we don't like you right back. Oh, Barry Moore. She's all right, she's all right. Are they on about Miss July? I like a cigarette after I've disabled a nuclear weapon. Sink the ship, fuck it. Look at uh, all that come. They were trapped yeah. in there for so long. <laughs> it was the 90s. That's how streets of Britain used to look. Yeah. Back in the good old days. Steven Seagal must have absolutely fucking loved this bit. Now everybody gather around me and tell me how fucking wonderful I am. I want everybody to say that I'm the best thing ever. And everybody laughs at it everywhere. I'm scared of needles. Ah! Yeah! I'd love it if she went, I, I wasn't travel sick before, but now I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> she, goes, she pulls back and she goes, I'm not into you. <laughs> I don't know where you got that idea from. I just want to stay alive. You were naked and you didn't touch my booms. That's rejection as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I was putting it okay. all out there on Front Street and you did nothing about it. That's all his cheese is in there. Yeah. Stand face fucker. Could he look any more miserable? <laughs> Cheer the fuck up. Got to the end of the movie. I do like a good true story, though, dude. Oh, yeah, me too. I love that, it. That happened 1992. Uh, documentary, that was. Casting all of appearance. Steven Seagal's first. Of course it is. Brad Rea, Chris brother. I love all of uh, Seagal's true stories. Mm. Mark for Death is my favourite. I think my favourite true story of his is, um, well, was it Alone in the Dark? The, oh, no, uh, Against the Dark, that's it. That's my favourite true the, story, yeah. 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 Is he in the Onion movie as a character called Cock Puncher? I think so, yeah. I might need to watch that then. Well, Under Siege is done. Under Siege. Under Siege. Not his best, 
No. Certainly not his worst. I can't believe he did a movie called Black Dawn. That must just be <coughs> him tasing everybody. Yeah. He went fucking stutter crazy on that movie. Well, there he's with a foxy Tamara Davis. And the crazy John Piper Ferguson. <sighs> he's been in some movies, isn't he? Piper Ferg. Yeah. Don't we do a film with him? Yeah, we did Drive. That's right, yeah. Handsome fella. Handsome fella. Oh! I gotta go get something to eat, dude. No problem, dude. What are you eating? I'm gonna go for Chinese tonight. Why not? I was gonna have soup, but then I thought, ah, fuck it, treat yourself. With some Chinese. Yeah, why not? I've had Chinese in ages. Yeah. I might have a Chinese tomorrow. Hmm. I think I've just talked myself into getting a Chinese tomorrow. Yeah, but by getting a Chinese tomorrow, you mean... I mean a sex. Chinese one. Yeah. For sex, OK. Good. Yeah, I'll bring one up. Well, you are. <laughs> I want you around here in ten minutes. I'll bring a condom. It's not for me, it's for the dog. <laughs> he watches and masturbates, and I don't want any of that on my shoes. No, 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 what, what, what? Not least of all when it should be in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we fade back through into the ship. Because Seagal cannot resist a little bit more militaristic porn. He loves the military. They protect our nations. The United Nations. United of the nations of, of America. Americas. Because we're all nations and one. Except when we're at war. And then we're nations at war. <laughs> I know about things. I'm a diplomat. I'm a diplomat with Russia. I know all about Russia. I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest blues guitarist there has ever been. Nobody's ever been as good as me at the guitar. Buddy Guy had me playing. He gave up the guitar the next day. Eric Clapton learned everything from me. Even the racism. <laughs> right, indeed. I shall let you get off and All right, get man. something to eat. Yep. All right, Chief. Well, that was oh. good. I enjoyed that. It was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. Three hours. Yeah. All right. Take it easy, Chief. Speak to you oh. soon. Speak to you later, dude. See you later. There are men, and then there are second unit podcast men. The podcast you've just been listening to is part of the second unit podcast network. Find all of our shows at 2upn.blogspot.com or on Facebook under the Second Unit Podcast Network. Our fantastic list of shows include Drunk on VHS, We Came from the Basement, No Budget Nightmares, The After Movie Diner, Dr. Action and the Kick-Ass Kid, and Blood Baths and Boomsticks. Take one podcast into the shower. Don't be a blithering idiot, Alan. We can give you the multiple podcast cleansing system all in one place, and your hair deserves Our programming is available across all platforms, from iTunes to Podomatic, TalkShoe to Stitcher, so you have absolutely no excuse. Listen today, and a free naked person of your choice will be shipped from Thailand to your door in a matter of weeks. The Second Unit Podcast Network, bringing you the action and leaving the boring stuff to the other guys. Bloody hell, who does a girl have to blow around here to get a decent beverage?